Hey everybody, it's Erin Cahill. I'm the voice of Rebecca Chambers in the new Resident Evil Vendetta, and you are listening to the Residents of Evil podcast. Welcome to the Residents of Evil podcast, episode 3. In this episode, we have a very special guest, actor Aaron Cahill, voice of Rebecca Chambers in the upcoming Resident Evil Vendetta movie, will be joining us to discuss her role in the film. But first, we have some Resident Evil news we want to get into, so let's just introduce ourselves. We'll go around. I'm JJ. AJ. Ollie. Uh, You guys know me from uh, the, the streams and all that good stuff. And I'm Tony. You know me as one of the admins over at Resident Evil 1.5 and also a local Boston photographer over at Lazaro Studios and all-around video game enthusiast slash nut job. That song should be playing, (laughs) If You Don't Know Me By Now. (laughs) (laughs) You guys kind of know who we are now, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still doing the uh, the Twitch streaming and uh, still also an admin on the uh, Residents of Evil as well. And you guys just know me from... um, Residents of Evil, a live stream, make videos. Um, But uh, I guess we could go around first and let's just kind of let everybody know what we've been up to, what games we've been playing. Um, I guess we'll start with you, Ali, and then we'll move to Tony, AJ, and then to myself. Um, So, Ali, what have you been up to and what have you been playing? I've actually uh, recently, um, on my channel, I've been trying to branch out and try some different things. Obviously, I got now last two. I'm still working my way through it. Uh, piece by piece it's hard having a channel because a lot of my gaming has to revolve around okay what am i going to live stream because i don't if i'm not going to be streaming it i'm not going to play it and i don't want to play it and not stream it <laughs> it's the, the piece of purpose of having a channel so uh, i've done some outlast 2 which i'm upset with myself i should have finished that by now but i've been really hooked on star wars the old republic the mmo it's free to play so i gave it a try i remember I, when it first came out back in 2012 bioware made that awesome um video for it and uh, it got me hyped, so I, I tried it when it first came out, but I didn't really get into MMOs back then. And I've tried it again recently, and that's pretty much consumed my channel, so that's oh, all I've been playing. I want to check that game out. Looks, it's pretty awesome. looks good. It really is. It's well done. Tony, what have you been up to? What have you been playing? Oh, kind of a lot. Uh, I know we talked about it earlier, but for everybody else, obviously that wasn't there from when we were talking. I, you know, I've been playing uh, Digimon World 1 on the PS1. Uh, my best friend's been coming over and compromising my other TV here, so he's been playing uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Legacy of the Duelist, and I've been watching him, giving him pointers and everything. Uh, we've both been kind of working uh, side by side on making the same deck and help uh, take it on the, the internet, which has been fun. Uh, nice. nice. Uh, what else have I been playing? Uh, play a little bit more of uh, Niho uh, recently. That's like the Japanese version of Dark Souls from Team Ninja. Which is really good. It's a it's a very challenging game for those who like the Dark Souls games. I, I heavily advise people to check this out when it drops in price if you're not too sure on this type of a game. But I, I it, if you like a game with challenge, it's definitely one people should uh, check out. Uh, and much like Ali, I did start playing Outlast 2 when it came out, but so many other things have been happening. But I did play a lot. I have liked it. It's brutal. Not as scary as I thought it would be at times, but it does really have its moments. But again, I'm not I'm not too far. I was like about two hours into the game. <laughs> yeah, I'm about the same, and I'm kind of seconding you on that. I haven't really been too scared. Uh, I will say that when I first started, when you're in the school and the locker opens on itself, I said some bad words to that locker. <laughs> and I also said some bad words at a few doors that closed on me. So yeah. <laughs> other than that, I haven't really been too scared yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, same here. Uh, I started playing Code Veronica, which I know AJ will be very happy about because uh, yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I wanted. I, I did do a live stream of that on PS4 a while back, and it was uh, it was really fun. Had a couple people join. Uh, trying to think, is there anything else I've been playing? Uh, no. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, I've actually been going back and playing a lot of the old Tekken games recently because next Friday, when Tekken Seven finally drops after a three year, three four year. I... Wait, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No one's gonna hear from me for a while. I have been because I got a taste <laughs> of it at PAX East. So just send cookies to his house. He'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Send all the cookies. <laughs> but you yeah, know uh, that's uh, that's pretty much what I've been up to. 
cool, right, man. Well, I recently just made the switch over to PS4, so I'm Welcome to the pretty boss. much trying to hype myself up getting back into groove here. I've been playing Uncharted 4, Good which man. is fucking amazing. Yeah, it lives up to the hype. Uh, I've been going back and forth between that and Rise of the Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider is kind of meh compared to that, but <laughs> eh, yeah. Uh, next one I plan on starting soon is Mirror's Edge Catalyst. I played the beta last year, and you know, from what I saw, it was really, really, really freaking good. So I'm hyped for that. And lots of PS4. Yeah. Um, but yeah, PlayStation 4 is awesome. And if you haven't played it before, there's a lot of really good games you can catch up on. Um, Naughty Dog. Naughty, Naughty Dog, Dog is yeah. awesome. always putting out great games. They're between killing it. The Uncharted series and The Last of Us, which The Last of Us 2 is coming Ooh, out soon. You know what? I forgot Hopefully to mention, too. Horizon mm-hmm. Zero, the new Horizon oh, game. Yes, Horizon yeah. Zero Dawn is beautiful. Yep, I'm getting that soon. I can't wait. A lot of great games. Cool, man. If you want exclusives, basically, go with Sony. Yeah, I got, they yeah. got some some really good, really good oh, um, exclusives. Saw some Xbox and, and Nintendo fans out there, but it depends on what you're into. I mean, each console has their own great exclusives, but I think Sony always puts out uh, really, really good ones. Well, for yeah. me, with Sony, it's more about diversity. Right. That's what you get with Sony. Right. Okay. Um... I guess lately I've been playing, I've been well, I've been playing a lot of fan Resident Evil games, which I've I've got to try out some really mm-hmm. cool ones. Um, I've showcased them on the Residents of Evil YouTube channel. But really, what I've been playing is Resident Evil Outbreak because I played it when it first came yes. out. But good the, man, yeah, it's, it's fucking hard. <laughs> it's it way is, harder dude. than I remember. It's really it. hard. <laughs> it is. And, uh, See, JJ, that game shows how new we became with all these freaking handheld games. Yeah, it, it like, it's so good though. I like, uh, I don't remember it being that good. I remember having fun with it, but um, the one really cool thing is I got it on computer now because I have it for PS2, but I um I have the PS or PCSX2 emulator, and I do have mm-hmm. the widescreen hack, and I have it turned up um. Like, I think almost a 4K. I think it's either 2K or 4K. Yeah, those K. graphics, man. I was watching you play those graphics. They were yeah. looking really nice like, for being such uh-huh. a dated game. They look, like, especially on my monitor, they look incredible. You know, mm-hmm. YouTube downscales it for my streams, but yeah. it still looks good on there. And 60 frames, it's like, that game, like, if, uh, you know, they were to re-release that for PS4 on the PS2 market in HD... It's fine. You you don't have to do yeah. anything. You just need to Ooh, add online I need to support. jump in there, JJ. Yeah, jump I in. Jump in I got one more uh, game I've been playing, so jump you in. You were saying that. about 60 frames per second. No matter what you do, even if it's showing 60 frames per second, it is not 60. It's 30. <laughs> really? It's so yes. smooth, though. Like, I normally, you know, people say, you really can't tell. I can see when it's smooth. Oh, you can smooth. tell. It, yeah. You're getting, um, like, when you're playing it, you're upscaling it. It's, yeah. You yeah. know, you're not going to get the full 60. You're getting 30, but it feels like 60 it because everything's so a lot smooth. smoother. Okay. And people are complaining about the loading screens. Yeah. The reason why. Look at that game and how beautiful it is. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's good, but it's hard. It's you know good. what was also? Um, <laughs> that crossfire you were playing looked really, really well done. Yeah. Graphically, it was, it was clean looking. I mean, yeah, you can still see it. Uh, it's not, you know, some, some perfect game, but... Just to see that somebody, uh, it's a fan-made game, that the quality is actually really good. It's, it is super uh, impressive. It is. The uh, Resident Evil 1 first person one that you're doing, Yeah. Um, I was really surprised at that too, which is interesting. And I saw some of the responses I was going through the, you know, through your uh, your uh, comments. And I was Creeping. like, a lot of people are kind of, it's really starting to define or, or make that, that definition of what people want for a Resident Evil game to be yeah. um, in between. Because... It shows that we we would like to see one of the you know these games in first person as well as third person. Yeah, I did because I'm I'm a fixed camera advocate, but I like to try fan games you know in a whole mm-hmm. new perspective. Like I understand what they are and I think mm-hmm. that's really cool. But I have seen the other side because I've been you know I played that one by DJ. Yeah, and uh, I have seen people very very upset about first person and where I have to Me. reassure them that. Hey, this is a fan game. Like you need to understand that this isn't a yeah, legit this is game. not legit. <laughs> Chill, <laughs> yeah. But uh, but the immersion part is cool. To being able to actually experience these locations again in first person. Yeah. That would be the only reason why I would buy a VR. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, it would be so cool. Like I said, not as part of a main game, but just a side yeah, thing op- to check out. Yeah. 
Even if so, it was a guided tour during the credits where you can walk through the game yeah. locations in first person, that's a hell of an idea right there. For sure. So these fan projects are really cool because they give you different perspectives. Yeah. I mean, that, that crossfire is almost, you know, like a, a full game in itself where it has right. its own puzzles. Like uh, it has its own like locations. It's got a church. It's so cool. And I actually got in touch with the creator. And unfortunately, he's been very busy lately. So he's not had any time to work on it in a while and doesn't plan to so hopefully things ch uh, turn around i told him to let me know you know if he if he does start working on it again i'll definitely you know show off his work because it's great and dj yeah. still working on his and that's super cool um yeah. so that's what i've been playing but the other one i've been playing a lot is uh new super mario brothers because i finally got the i got it for i got it for the dolphin emulator i have a wii but i haven't played it in forever and uh, I don't even know if I have all my cords for it, but I finally put it in and I did enhance it. So now it's in really high definition. And I play with the <laughs> Xbox One controller and goddamn like, like my daughter, when she plays with me, she, she doesn't know how good she's got it. She's playing right? on the couch with a wireless <laughs> controller, watching mm -hmm. Mario and like super high definition. And it's just, it's so much fun <laughs> and it looks so goddamn gorgeous. Spoiled. <laughs> Spoiled. Yeah, for sure. So awesome. yeah. That's what I've been doing, uh, but I should let everybody, well, I don't know when this podcast is going to come out, but I am going on vacation, so actually by the time it comes out, I'll probably already be back, so there's no point in letting everybody know that I won't be streaming this week. Um, completely forget all that. <laughs> yeah, never mind, scratch that, I'm back. Um, <laughs> but I guess we can get right into the news, because there's yeah, a, a decent amount of it. Let's cover the Resident Evil 7 news first. Um Okay, so the, the the big news from Resident Evil 7 is Not a Hero DLC has been delayed. Um, they need more time to work on it. It just wasn't where they wanted it, and they are holding off, you know, to make sure it's done right before they put it out. Now, this left some people upset. This left some people in, under, uh, you know, understanding, and this left some people... Um, basically like Not i told surprised. you so yeah i told you so um so there was three different types of people i guess i fall in the category like there's so much i can play right now i i don't care i'm looking forward to it but as long as it's done right it's free fine whatever even though it feels like it kind of should have been part of the main game it's like okay you kind of put the game out where it feels a little unfinished um i know it wraps up ethan's part but i mean to add in Chris Redfield at the end feels like there should have been more. Um, it's fine. I, I can wait. I can play something else when it's done. Put it out, and I'm, you know, really looking forward to playing it. But I don't care. I'm I I can wait a little bit. Uh, right. What do you guys think? I guess we could start. Well, with I'm in AU the Asian. same. I'm in the same boat as JJ. I'm in the I don't care boat. For me, I think it's going to end up going down the action route anyway, and that's the actual reason they delayed it because they want. They saw the sales, and they probably, you know, oh, God, we need to get back to the action now because this game isn't selling how we thought it would be. So I think that's why they delayed it. They want to put more horror elements into it. There were also leaked uh, HUD icons that came out, and they looked like almost like Resident Evil 6s. Overly uh, complicated, kind of a yeah, mess. Yeah, overly complicated, too much. There was just too much stuff behind it. And with Chris Redfield... We all know every time he shows up, it goes action. Same with Leon. So, honestly, I don't care. It could be deleted for all I care. Oh, okay. I'm not even playing Resident Evil 7. <laughs> That's a little extreme. All right. He's, you know what? Just, I'm done with it. Just period. Yep. I'm done. Yeah. I mean, do, we, do we really expect anything else from AJ at this point? This is what he does. He He's very blunt about how things work. And I yep. think it's great. Yeah, yeah, we definitely need give that. Give me Revelation 3 and give me Resident Evil 2 or give me death. <laughs> oh, you'll get death before any of that, then. Yeah. I really hope not. <laughs> no, no, me too. <laughs> Tony, uh, what do you think about the delayed uh, Not a Hero DLC? I'm honestly like not surprised um, because they obviously were going to shove this out as soon as possible because they had the whole hype train right running for seven. They had such high hopes for seven. They were all like, "We know this is what people want. We know what you want now. We understood. We've heard the cries." We put everything into making this game, yada, 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 you know, that kind of deal. So they're just going to be like, all right, so we've got this DLC. They're going to love it and everything. We've got the we've got the in-between DLC for them, you know, the, the restricted videos or whatever those were. You know, we had those coming out. So they just figured, okay, it's going to be good. We're going to hit our 
our mark that we we asked for and it's of course it's Capcom they they put out numbers that they cannot project anymore they they yeah. they ask Call of Duty numbers yeah we'll, so we'll be getting when, into that next yeah so when seven ended as just like okay so clearly something more will be done about this I guess and that's where I'm at I'm just like well if it comes out it comes out if it doesn't I actually kind of want to know what's going on because it's free DLC. That's yeah. the thing. That's I'm like, all right, since I'm not paying for this delayed DLC, I want to know what the next step was, you know, and you know, we'll that find actually, out. That actually kind of shocks me that they're putting all this work into free DLC. It's Capcom. Well, True. They, 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 they need, they need this because they also realized, and like, you know, all of us realized it too. They didn't even come close to hitting the sales they wanted. It was like 3.5 million. They eventually did sell though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I, I guess I, we could get into that. Now they wanted to sell 4 million right away in long term, 10 million, which is ridiculous. Right. I mean, it's yeah, not really, yeah. it's ridiculous. Tomb Raider reboot was released on pretty much every single system you know last gen systems this gen systems pc yeah and it still only sold nine million and i think it was like two years that's really good that's really really good that's really good but at the same time rise of the tomb raider only sold like 2.5 or 3 million yeah well that's so also what happens you, that. yeah well that, that's what happens when you put a game on a system a system that nobody plays and, very true. and it's and it's fan base has been mainly on Sony for for anything. Yeah. I, I, and I know like later Tomb Raider games did come out on the Xbox and the reboot did come out on the Xbox as well. But let's face it, you had you had more fans on the on the PlayStation era and back in the day than you did now. I don't yeah. know. It just comes hand in hand with me because Square Enix did the same freaking thing with Tomb Raider that they did. You know, Capcom's doing now with Resident Evil. Uh, Square Enix originally expected Tomb Raider to sell five million. I think it was in the first month. Mm. Yeah, that their numbers were crazy too. I don't know why it did well and it wasn't good enough. And I think that's <clears> why <throat> now the company is being sold. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Hitman. Yeah, and that was such a good game. I really was never a huge Hitman fan. I played them, and that was so good. But uh, yeah, uh, Ollie, what did you? What do you think about Not a Hero being delayed? Well, I'm. Uh, I'm on a plus and a negative for that, a positive and, and a negative note for it. Like, uh, negative because I wanted to play it. Obviously, I did like 7, and I wanted to see more from it and see what they were offering up as far as the Chris, you know, uh, story arc and uh, resolve some issues that were left over from Seven's story. But um, the fact that they delayed it um, kind of gave me a little bit of hope because it shows that they were paying attention uh, for the most part. Well, we think they're paying attention. And they weren't going to just put out some some piece of junk DLC. Even the fact that it's free and they're going back and putting effort into redoing it is positive to me. Because if they could have just put out this piece of garbage free DLC and be like, this is what you get. Instead, they're pulling it back and saying, let's let's redo this you know, and give them something that we think um, they would want. And uh, something that's positive for the game and positive for the franchise. So... Um, I still am, like I'm really um, anticipating it to see what happens, and uh, like I said, it's it's both a, a good and a, and a bad thing for me. So the yeah. only bad is that I didn't get a chance to play it. That's it's all true. good from there. That's true, and I guess we could say one good thing about having such high expectations is they know they can't screw up, so they're going to go back now because they didn't, you know, like you say, make this and then decide to put it out. Now they are currently making right. it, so now they are going to bend it to what fans want to see which means we're going to get a better product. Um, you know, there is a plus to this, too. Yeah, that's a plus because they need Look this. at where <laughs> we were with Resident Evil 5 with the paywall with versus mode. Yeah. Right. Compared to where we are now with them actually not putting shit behind a paywall for Resident Evil anymore. Oh, it's right, definitely exactly. better. Uh, yeah. It's, and you know, like I said, that's why it's like it's free DLC. Um, it's, free DLC that they care about. They care about. a good thing, too. They're actually going back and making sure it's something that's, that's worthy. Mm, I don't know about that. I'm still on the fence. I think they're scrambling. <clears throat> True. But you didn't like they seven. Had, give, so. no, it could be I, a little I, bit of both. <laughs> I think they had something planned originally. And with the feedback and the sales, now they have to scramble to fix it. They have to scramble right. to replace Chris with the Chris from Resident Evil 5 and 6. That, you know, that could be what they're doing, too. They I'm may actually kidding. be redoing that character model. <laughs> they could. They wouldn't just fire the guy. No, That's they won't do that. Everything Bring Jack the muscles like behind sure. that. <laughs> But yeah, I, I'm I'm hoping it comes out to be something that's actually good. 
but we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I don't think they've given out a date yet, have they? No, it's still... it, they pushed it back, I think, until fall. fall. Yeah, so yeah. and that's that's a, a, a worry as well. Um, you had that hype train come off, coming off the release. Everybody was playing it. Everybody was interested in it. Um, you put out two DLCs within what, the first month and a half, mm-hmm. and expecting to have another big DLC that was free coming out in the spring that didn't come out. So is that hype going to be lost by the time you know the DLC comes out? Quite possibly. They're going to have to market all that. Yeah, and I, the, the DLC they did put out that, that you did have to purchase wasn't very well received. Um, yeah. Sure, it might have been cool. I think it was I, interesting. I, it was short. I, it's very interesting. Um, you know, gambling in Resident Evil, that's interesting. Uh, puzzle yeah, in a room is, is interesting, cool but was it worth the I thought price? it was really no. freaking weird. It's different. But it was it was fun to play, but it wasn't, I didn't want to. It wasn't worth it. paid too much for it. Ass. Yeah, we paid yeah. too much for it. So they got to make sure why they I don't keep screw telling up. people stop buying the freaking season passes. Yep. And yeah. as far as um, the sales go, you know, they hit like you said they were somewhere around 3.5 if not maybe a little bit more. Um, they expected to sell four so they fell short. They still put out a good uh, a good amount. I mean, over 3.5 is still good, but they they fell below the benchmark. So um does that affect also the DLC? Because they were so successful with 5 and 6 where they had a format of all this action going on and everything. Um, are they going to switch back and make the DLC more action-oriented? Was it already action-oriented? Maybe they're switching into a horror aspect to match the game. What's going on there? Because I, I feel like them falling below the numbers they expected to have has influenced the DLC and probably whatever we're getting in the future from them. Yeah, You know, Ollie did bring up the uh, whole Curse Redfield remodel thingy. Uh, my other guess is they're actually responding to the fan feedback and trying to work some way in that it cannot be Chris now. Yeah. Uh, that would be interesting. That actually, yeah, that's could, a big yeah. thing we haven't even brought up yet is we do know now that that's Chris and he's working for Blue Umbrella, which is supposed mm-hmm, to be right, a good right. umbrella that is making uh, better for what the umbrella previously did before that. Um, why he's working for them, why he would even, you, we don't know, we'll find out. It is very interesting and I am... I hope it's not going to be like, oh, it's just good Umbrella, so he decided to work for them. I hope they actually explain yeah. it a little bit more, and it's not just, you know, we're just using Umbrella because this is going to get a sales because people know what Umbrella is. You know, I hope it has... Right, right. It's, yeah. Hopefully it's not a, uh, just a marketing thing from just Capcom's generic. perspective. Be like, hey, let's just throw Umbrella on there to make everybody wonder why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am it, still it so better have something significant. <laughs> I haven't played the game, but I've only watched like a... You know, a Twitch playthrough of it, but I am right. still so confused about this whole freaking umbrella thing. Well, umbrella I... wasn't even a factor in the game until you see the helicopter. Yeah. Because it wasn't even. Uh, there were ties to some umbrella research at one point in the game, um, but they were never really an influence in the whole situation that you were in. And then you find out, you know, when they fly away in the helicopter, the end. There's an umbrella logo, a blue umbrella logo on the helicopter that Chris is in. And then you, you know, later we hear about the DLC that there was blue umbrella. It's a new organization that is going back to fix the mistakes, and somehow they hired Chris on because of his experience, and they want to make everything better. So, Boulder punching. Like, <clears throat> well, yeah, basically, I, would, yeah. I mean, I would hire somebody that punches boulders, too. I want them on my team. That's a winning team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just want him to hang out and be like, hey, can you punch that boulder for me? <laughs> yeah, it's your mascot there. You're, yeah, that's your guy. So um, that pretty much covers up our thoughts on the Resident Evil 7 Not a Hero DLC. Uh, we all basically were every type of fan except for none of us were mad about it. It's free, and it's hard to be mad. You can be upset, but, yeah, we weren't mad about it. Um, But then uh, some big news. Now, this this news is huge. Um, We're going to go past Resident Evil 7 now because we basically covered that, and we're going to get into the Resident Evil film franchise. Franchise, sorry, is confirmed getting rebooted, and they already... I am already cringing. they They already have a producer and a script writer. Uh, I'm not the scriptwriter. I'm not 100 percent on his name, but he did write Mortal Kombat, and the producer oh is God, no. is James Wan. <laughs> now James Wan is responsible for uh, the the Conjuring, Insidious. Um, I hope I got that right. I don't have any facts yeah, up ahead of me. I'm yeah. going solely off of. Uh, it's okay, JJ. Who facts anymore? <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Just, I'll just say who it. Is. I'll make it up, and it's gonna be a thing. But uh, I mean, I. I was on the Let's Talk Resident Evil podcast and we discussed, I think, almost two and a half hours about this. So um, I have my thoughts on it. I'll keep it short. Um, 
I am excited that these movies are getting rebooted for the fact that I wasn't a big fan of the direction they took, like many fans. Um, I think that they were just using it to make money. Um, they, I would say they disrespected the series as a whole with these films. I know a lot of people like them, but... Um, they were just dumb action movies, really, you know, dumb, cheesy action movies that, I mean, I, I can I can admit that I still seen them all and I enjoyed them for what they were because I've been going ever since the first one came out, but I've cut all ties with the games, um, but it needed to end. It was being prolonged. It mm-hmm. was starting to get just over the, I mean, it's always been over the top, but it was getting, it was, it needed stupidly to end. Ridiculous. Yeah, it was stupidly <laughs> it ridiculous. It was literally like. It was bad to death and nothing should have ended at three. So the reason why I'm excited is because I honestly thought they were either going to make another one or they weren't going to make anything. So the fact that we're getting more gives me hope. And if it's bad, that's what we have now. It's no big deal. I just, you know, if you don't want it, don't go see it. But if there's a chance now that it could be good. Um, and you know, I'm really excited to see what direction they take because are they going to keep going action? I'm pretty sure they're rebooting it because they're going to try something different, which makes me feel like they're going to fall more in line with the games. Now I, uh, James Wan producing is positive. Um, he has had a good track record with horror movies, uh, but he's not directing. So there's a difference there. He's only overseeing. Um, no director has been announced yet. The script writer, Mortal Kombat guy. Sure, a lot of people say Mortal Kombat was well, their favorite. This is not the Mortal Kombat that we're thinking of. This is, I believe, the new Mortal Kombat they're working on. Like the the oh, reboot of Mortal Kombat. Interesting. Okay, I, I guess I can't. From looking at his IMDb page, like his background, this writer. Um, What's his name? Because I didn't is, say it. His name is uh, Greg Russo. Okay. He has literally nothing right now. They're all in development, being announced. All right, we'll skip over that so, then. So we'll... so he's, he's pretty much new. But and as far as what he is working on, um, a movie called Category 6, which I don't know what that's about. Uh, Mortal Kombat, which you know we know what Mortal Kombat is, but this is not the one that's from before. Yep. This has nothing to do with Wes Anderson. Okay. Wes Anderson. Paul W. Wes Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a Wes Anderson out there, I apologize. I don't mean to lump you in with that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, and then he's got another one, uh, Robotech. That's all he's uh, got okay. on his IMDb page, the so picture of him. We have so. yet to see if his work is promising, but like I said, I have hope that it it, it may be good. Now, um, now that's the facts, and that's kind of what's going on. But now, what I would like to see, because I honestly have no idea what direction they're going to take. I'm hoping more of a um, a suspense horror. Um, but if I had to pick my perfect resident evil movie i would say for one lower the budget you don't need a crazy over the top budget um just bring down the scale to like the video games of one area now a lot of people would like to see the games made as movies and in my opinion the games are what they are and i mean they're like resident evil 1 remaster that's perfect you can make a movie on that it's gonna be you know it's already done we don't need to, you know, we don't need to see that as a movie. It's already done, and it's done very, right. very well. I would like to see something that exists in the same universe, um, and if it is going to exist in the same universe, I would like to see something with a, from a new cast of characters that we don't, we haven't seen yet. Maybe there could be some calls to actual characters and stuff, but I would like to see um, sort of like a, like a Resident Evil outbreak sort of style of cast, just a bunch of people lumped together in a situation where the movie is sort of like the mist where it all takes place in one area. There's a Mm -hmm. lot of suspense. There's a lot of tension. There's a great script that keeps things moving along and interesting, but it's not over the top crazy. And it really, you know, gives you that feeling of, um, the horror that lays within raccoon city. Say it took place during, you know, in raccoon city. I would like to see that or on the scale of, you know, 10 Cloverfield lane, you know, smaller. Yeah. 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 Or or down on the the thing about Resident Evil that was so, you know, the reason I think that we love so much is that it, the the feeling of despair, of um, claustrophobic, you know, tight spaces, exactly. limited resources, everything around you is dead. There's no hope. Will you survive? You know, the, they have these, these intense feelings that you got the whole time. And you can capsule, uh, capsulate or, or, or get all that into a small movie that didn't require this huge over the top. Because when you make it too big and, um, you know, too much, too much graphics and then too big a scale, you lose all that. Uh, feeling that you had from what the game was so special 
Exactly. And that's kind of what happened with the games. You know, a lot of people love four, five, yeah. six, but it yep. was more money. They wanted to make more money and they started to appealing to a different audience. It was much more mm-hmm. action paced. It was it lost what it was. And that's kind of what I want the movies to go back to what made the classic games so special. The mystery, the horror, the tension, the suspense, you know, and that's why. That, now, I don't know if they're going to do that because that would mean they're not going to make as much money. And these movies we're getting now are making a lot of money. Um, so they would really need to lower expectations. And um, I don't know. The companies, you know, this is a business. I don't know if they're going to do that. That's my thoughts on it. Pretty much summarized. So we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to it. I guess, Tony, we can go to you. We can start with you yeah. this time. Uh, my thoughts on it are... <laughs> <laughs> yep. no, I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm going to be more of an adult about this. Um, <laughs> no, I'm like, you know, uh, you got to remember, the when the original movies first came out, it was during that early 2000s era where a lot of other video game type movies had already either been done or were still uh, being done. It was also and, the Matrix uh, era where everything had to emulate the Matrix. Exactly. And, yep. you know, and you had you had movies like Doom that came out. We all know how atrocious that was. Pretty much every project Uwe Bull worked on. Blood is, Rain. Yeah, Blood Rain, uh, the House <laughs> of the Dead movie. Um, you know, classics, man. They're all classics. Yeah, yeah classic <laughs> horrible. Uh, you know, and then, and then plus, obviously, like, yeah, the original Mortal Kombat, which was, like, it was still good. You know, uh, it could have been a lot worse because uh, it was coming kind of off of other movies like uh, the double, the live action Double Dragons movie and uh, the Mario, Mario Brothers. Yeah, movie. Yeah. <laughs> the exactly. best one of all time. Also, so, also like, Mortal, Mortal Kombat was kind of like a refresher in many ways. It was it's pure 90s in every single way. The sequel, not as great. Well, so the original Mortal or not Mortal Kombat. I said Mortal Kombat. Uh, the original Resident Evil was actually by itself. I still like as a movie. Resident you know, Evil, not the follow-ups, just the one by itself where it was independent characters, independent story. You know, like, I, and that's the other thing I was going to actually uh, talk about as well, was, you know, like, you, you go back and you watch the the where this fr- franchise first began, and, yeah, it doesn't have, like, anything really to do with the games at all. They're just t- taking, like, bits and pieces and, like, altering things. But in the end, what did you get? You got a crack commando unit coming into this uh, mansion to reboot this killer queen and... You know, shit gets crazy. All the dead get unlocked from the place, and they have a massive shootout. People are dying, and it's entertaining for the most part. And then you know, the second half of the movie, they're just running around. They're they're trying to escape from everywhere. They have like no ammo left for anything. It was pretty good. And if it was his own movie, it probably would have done better without the Resident Evil name on board. Yeah. You know, then Apocalypse came along. That one wasn't too bad either. That one's forgivable because the actress who plays Jill in it is act- actually did. Re- Research on the character. Only, only saving grace of that movie is her. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, y- y- I've seen in interviews, uh, Mila Jovovich and, uh, and her husband, they always talk about how they were fans and how they used to play the games and they're very <laughs> I'm about dedicated. To get into that too. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm about to right, rip I'll on that, that one. I'll save, that, I'll save that for you <laughs> then. Uh, but I see all these things that they promised, and every movie just kept introducing new characters, taking away old characters, and characters being forgotten about lost or whatever are never explained whatsoever you know uh wentworth miller playing chris is never seen in after his first and only appearance uh ali larder disappeared for one of them uh sienna gilroy as jill disappeared for one of them uh ada completely disappeared as well from the second to last film and then you watch the last movie and it hurts because i haven't seen it uh like well sorry i haven't seen i didn't see it in theaters and i'm not gonna buy the dvd but I watched a lot of it on YouTube, and everything is super cut. The, they make oh a motion, God. and then within the next second, it cuts. And when that punch lands, it cuts to another one, cuts to another angle, another angle. And I, it was like a massive hit. And they it's do it's sickening. Yeah, it's not. It's like that movie. I don't know if you ever saw it. Uh, it was this, it was this weird sci-fi movie back in the early two thousands with John Travolta, and they shot the entire movie at an angle. Is that the one uh, off of uh, Scientology? It, it might as well be at this point. Battlefield Earth or something Battle, like that. That's the one. Thank you. Yeah, yes. that they like is is like whatever Hubbard L. Ron Hubbard is that his name? The dude who started Scientology. Yeah. Like that was one of his sci-fi novels that they actually believe is part of their like religion. Oh yeah. <laughs> They believe, it. <laughs> oh but th- th- well, that, that was the thing. In that movie, they shot everything at an angle, and in this movie, everything was a super cut. Yeah. And Two to nothing three seconds. Makes, you know, there, there's just. 
nothing in the final movie. So they realized, despite the fact that somehow these movies made money. Um, America. Yeah. America. <laughs> People seem to enjoy them for whatever reason. And now they realize, well, the, the the franchise is a lot bigger, is just as big as now as it was back then. You know, people are getting back into it. A, a whole new group are, are discovering it because everything retro is becoming, you know, something again. I mean, Resident Evil's been around for over 20 years now. So I think at this point, uh, they might have something perfect. Well, not not perfect. They might have a grasp on how they're supposed to handle it this time. Like it's already been mentioned by you guys. You know, it's like, hey, you could do it a little differently. You could add this, that to it and everything. You keep it contained. You don't have to go like full, you know, like you have to what's the word I'm looking for? You don't have to like overdo it with everything. Yeah. Right. It doesn't have to be such a grand epic. Exactly. <laughs> start small. Yeah. Start small. F- realize where the strengths are in this, you know, give either give characters that we want to see properly cast them at least in some way and run with it. I think if they, if they, if Hollywood does it right, they'll do it right. But uh, given the way Hollywood's track record, I'm not too sure because I thought the Assassin's Creed movie was going to be good. I heard it was and junk. Oh my god, it was beyond junk. Uh, I had uh, like Ubisoft was supposed to invite a bunch of the 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 cosplayers I know uh, to the to the event, and they fucked the fans over instead and didn't invite them. Really? And the movie got trashed. And I was bummed out because like Michael Fassbender's in, and he's on fire. Yeah, over yeah, last he's a great years. actor. And even people said like you could see that he really tried with this movie. Mm. So. Hollywood and these kind of things don't do well. And the best example I can give on why you need to let true fans handle it is uh, is, a, is a series slash movie called Street Fighter Assassin's Fist. Yes, that one was done amazing. It, thank you. Yes, like that thing because they, they literally took the lore of Street Fighter, which everybody's like, oh, there's no mm-hmm. lore in fighting games. So it's yeah, like, oh, you're, this, yeah, exactly. Street Fighter has a lot. <laughs> oh, yes, it does. It it does indeed. And they nailed everything. They also threw in like their own little touches to it that actually mm-hmm. tied in very well with everything that happens. I mean, hell, at one point they they even <laughs> they even got the guy who like produces uh Street Fighter Yoshi Nori Ono, he was there. They were playing Mega Man Two on the yeah. On the they NES. did they did it very much uh, a timepiece as well. Like, everything they wore was very befitting when like Street Fighter was coming out. You know when Capcom was in its early glory days, and uh, they paid a lot of tribute to that. Like you know, I mean, just just everything was was done so awesomely. <laughs> Exactly, yeah, and they, they, they follow, like, the timeline, because, like, in the Street Fighter games that we have now, they're not in current timeline, pretty much. I mean, like, because, uh, like, you know, when Ryu and Ken were young, like, in their early 20s, that was in the that was in the 80s, which mm-hmm. is why they had the Mega Man, like, you know, the clothing. So fans did it right, plus the guy who wrote and directed it and everything, he played Akuma, and he did great. Yeah, so, he's a fan, and he's a hell of a martial artist, a director ex- and writer. So. Exactly. So if you have fans that know what they're talking about and they're passionate about it, you get something truly fantastic. Hollywood just wants that easy score or they want to go back to something that made them money, which is why you see so many reboots these days. Right. They just want to sell the name. Yeah. They're capitalizing yeah. on the name. Yeah. But that, that, that's that's pretty much my take. If it, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Like, you know, JJ said, uh, it'll pretty much will be right where we are. No yeah. no harm, no right. foul. Idea. Exactly. Right, right. But, uh, but uh, so yeah, Ali. Like your uh, uh, what was your what was your thoughts? Well, okay. So I we know my my stance on on Paul W. S. Anderson and how much like I hate all of his movies and the fact that he ruined Mila Jovovich for everybody and <laughs> and the franchise, um, and you why they keep this. yes. <laughs> you know, so I mean, I can beat a dead horse or I can beat Wes Anderson some more. Paul W. S. Anderson, sorry <laughs> again. Oh jeez, here you go. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna get that hate poor guy. We're gonna get Anderson, sued. Sorry. I love you. I don't know who you are, but I know you're better than him. So I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I immediately like the first thing was like, okay, why? Why are they rebooting something so quickly? Um, again, it's just because of the name. Um, and then I found that that Juan was in line to produce it. So that was like, okay, that's cool because he's made so many great horror movies. Um, I, I mean, excluding most of the Saw movies, like if you go with the first one, it's good. The rest of them are kind of eh, and then they get worse as they go on. So I, I don't count the rest of the Saw movies, but the first one was awesome. Um, Insidious is a great movie. Uh, Lights Out was pretty well done. Um, the Conjuring is one of my all-time favorite horror movies. Uh, he's currently working on Mortal Kombat. That's why he's tied in with Greg Russo, who's you know writing it. So huh. they work for the same um, company, I guess, under the same company. Um, 
so and then and he's bringing back Saw again. He's he's actually like active in the new Saw. So I'm hoping they bring back you know the flavor of what made Saw so great in the beginning. But he's got a, a lot of good movies under his belt as far as horror goes. Not much in the action side. So that's promising that we'll get more horror than action. Okay. Um, and then like so I don't, I don't know who Greg Russo is as far as like what his if he's done anything big outside of what I just named earlier. Maybe we've seen him as a co-writer on something else, but I really don't know what his credit's going to be. Hopefully, he's worthy. Um, if he was smart, he'd contact S.D. Perry and get some notes from her. So That would be And really be like, cool. hey, how do I develop characters? Um, and then, I, as we were talking about it, I came across this article um, from Mila. Okay, so uh, when I was kind of looking into, you know, what's going on with this reboot, obviously, they, they have the name. Um, they did a successful, again, with the last Resident Evil Um they, I think they said they pulled in uh, 320 mil, or 312.2 million worldwide. Of course, it says 160 that uh, million plus was in Asia again. Yeah, mm. which is where the big market is. And we, we talked about that before. My wife, ex, you know, explained it to me that it's bigger over there for the movies and the games because they all know the movies. Um, so that's where their big market is. But again, I'm happy that we got one. Uh, we'll see what Russo does. But I, I saw this article on it's on um, comicbook.com. And they're talking to Mila about it. And uh, at first, um, her first response was, okay, well, good luck with that. And then she actually went into explanation. This is what she said. She said, I think a lot of people with these franchises kind of put the cart before the horse. There's a danger to that. They've been wanting to reboot Resident Evil for a long time. And listen, I love the Resident Evil world. I think it's a great property. I would do it if I was a producer. I think what made Resident Evil so special is the people involved really loved what they were doing. And here's the funny part. And really, we're fans of the game. <laughs> I would suggest Jesus. that you find people that have the same passion for the property before you talk about reboots. I think if you get into this kind of genre, people are very sensitive to fakes. There's some real fans in the sci-fi action horror world, and they're not idiots. They smell when something is done because people love it and when something is done just because uh, to monetize an opportunity. It's funny that she says that because we've all seen the movies, and the that's, movies are garbage. That's and if like, you were a fan of the game... <laughs> that's hip- hypocrisy that's mega irony right there because yeah. <laughs> everything we hate about her series exactly you know, what she just explained you know, I, I don't know maybe if they went into making these movies thinking they were doing the right thing by the games and the right thing by the fans I think uh, Anderson just basically wrote his own bullshit idea of, of fanfic for Resident Evil with his wife in it and um ran it yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. um, so I, I don't see where she, she gets this whole mindset that she has mm-hmm. on this like um and she thinks they're basically jumping on it because, like I said, it's because it's the property. It's the name behind it. But, again, I'm, I'm positive because I, I love Resident Evil. I want to see really good movies come out. I want to see uh, what they can do with a good horror director like James Wan. Not none of this uh, Matrix three-second cut bullshit that we've been getting. Yeah. Um, I, should I add, just he's... hope they put the right people in charge. Like, you've got the great producer. Yeah. I, I don't know about your screenwriter, but you better come in with a good director. I want to see, like, a real horror director. AJ. Are you excited that the Resident Evil movies are being rebooted? I'm not. Uh huh. Nobody saw that coming. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, like, you know, the other man of Resident Evil. <laughs> the other guys were talking about the movie and you know the article that was posted, but they also forgot to talk about the company already confirmed they want to do six movies. Yeah. Oh, good point. Very good point. Yep. It's not about the fans. They don't care about the fans. It's Hollywood. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's all about making that money. The only reason they want to do that is because of how much the action films made. Um, yep. And here's my big point I want to try and make. I don't understand how the whole video game adaptations became a thing again. They died out after the whole blood drain and nonsense like that Tekken. Um, and now they're making a comeback. We have Sleeping Dogs coming. We have Just Cause coming. We have a Life is Strange online series coming. We have the Tomb Raider reboot movie coming. We have an Uncharted movie. Co- Where the hell did all these come from all of a sudden? Well, I think there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of great stories being told through video games that Hollywood's like, well, we're kind of out of ideas, but video games are knocking out of the park with originality and these but awesome the characters that everybody loves. That. Movies are limited to two hours. Video games mm-hmm. have no limit. Exactly. They give us time to bond and, and you know, like and, our characters, to experience things. Not and mention that's you are why the character. they don't work the only Mm -hmm. movie i've seen that was adapted or adapted so far was silent hill and that's the only one i like i think we can all agree with that silent hill was actually yeah 
that was that was a good one and, and like you said it's a they just have the reason why a lot of them aren't working is because they're not being adapted properly and that's why i said i would like it be to be in the same universe but with all new characters and all new script yeah. in the same timeline yeah. because what i want they have freedom <laughs> What I want is, like J.J. was saying earlier, an outbreak type of situation. Base the movie in Raccoon City, bring in all new characters, do not even touch the video game characters because no matter what you do, the fans are going to hate it. Exactly. Right. They will never live up. But honestly, if I had to choose, I would rather it become a TV series on Netflix because they could do so yeah, much I, more. I support that. that as well. I'd I rather it be agree. a series. You cannot fit a good adaptation into just two hours. Very, very valid point, and I completely so agree I, with that. I'm not excited about the new movie. I don't care if they brought on the holiest of directors. I don't give a shit. They can burn. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it really, like you said, it does not help that they said they want to do six because that basically, mm -hmm. I mean, as fans of the series and then being burned with the movies, hearing that they want to do six basically tells us they want to reboot the franchise to be exactly what it is now, but they just can't continue that any longer. So they're going to restart it. Right. And that's yeah. scary. Yeah. That is all scary. about, you know what? You money. can kind of blame Marvel for that too. Marvel set the whole thing up with the universe and the phases and planning all these movies in advance that there's a lot of companies, a lot of studios are trying to, you know, Replicate. capture that magic that Marvel did. Look at like, um, the whole monsters universe now you've got the mummy and frankenstein all these ones are being cast out dc has theirs going yeah. marvel's still knocking us out of the park but all these other companies are like hey we need to do what they did they set this this whole streamline to success if we plan out all these movies in advance people will get super excited but you're losing the fact that the people that do marvel actually care about marvel exactly. they're being done correctly they're being as a passion project not just for the money so that, but they're that's making actually, money yeah Oh yeah, they that's, are making money. That's the thing. And, the, and the one thing I can the one thing I can add to that about the whole thing. See, DC is just trying to play catch up, and yeah. over the last yeah. eight years since Iron Man, the original one, I think it's been eight years now, or at least mm -hmm. nine. You know, we've had all these other people that have tried to copy this win winning formula or try to start their own things, and it hasn't worked. DC right. doesn't have to compete because they would have had people that went. went would have gone and see their movies. There's yeah. so much wrong with the Man of Steel. There's a lot wrong oh, yeah. with Batman v Superman. Oh, yeah. uh, Suicide Squad was a fucking train wreck. <clears throat> yep. And then you had, uh, I'm trying to think, what's the other one? Uh, you know, and then you got the upcoming Wonder Woman. One, uh, Wonder Woman, and that actually looks good because I think they realized that That's they actually needed... getting some positive feedback. Yeah, it too. is. Like, exactly. That one might actually be their first real success. Yes, and the thing of it is. Marvel does things differently with what Hollywood doesn't let others do. Now, mm -hmm. Marvel, obviously, they're like, you know, we have kind of a lot of say in what happens here. But and that's kind of why Gu Guardians of the Galaxy won. I mean, it did so well because they liked James Gunn and what he brought to the table. Right. And they didn't really they they, they, they gave him almost free run because I, I watched a lot of his uh, live Q&A's that he's done on his phone and stuff. And he said he had a lot to to go about and do. And then, uh, then, then when Guardians Two came out, they pretty much just gave him free run and didn't change anything. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and, I've, that, I've... That, and that's the thing they give they uh, they give him creative control, and he knows he gets it. You know, yeah. and he obviously knows he can't put everything from the comics into these movies, but what he puts in does really well. And Hollywood right. needs to trust the people that they put in charge of these movies because, unfortunately. They hire these directors. The directors walk off the set all the time because the higher ups think they know what people want, but in all honesty, they're just like, "Well, we have the money, and we're in control." That's right. why a lot of these things are, a lot of these video game movies are tough to do. Because, like AJ said, we need movies to be told in a series. Now, Uncharted, I love the franchise, but I can see those being done as movies because each game itself is its own movie in many ways. Right. But then and, you have the, the issue of like something like Uncharted where your characters are so amazing that you're so attached to the real characters in the game that I don't think you should make a movie out of it because no. they'll never be able to read. Nope. Uh, you I know, say just hire them. Nolan North to do it. Just, just yeah, right. do it. They already yeah. actually an hired. Movie. They yeah. actually yeah. already hired the actor for Nathan Drake, and it's not even going to be old Nathan Drake. It's going to no, be no, they hired the they tired, hired Tom Holland for a young Nathan. Yeah, yeah. It's, I am not even hyped. I don't know. I feel like that's much better than replacing the nathan drake that we know now 
at least they're yeah. kind of going with something that hasn't been fully explored. I know that was there a young Nathan Drake in one of the games. See, my issue is why the hell can't we just go down the Square Enix route and have a full CGI Uncharted I agree. movie? CG movies are would, that way well, you don't have to worry about. We know and love. <laughs> That's actually going to be our main topic we're going to get to here in a second. Um, yeah, sure. But um, I guess we'll just wrap this up about the movies. Um, you guys all made some really valid points. Um, we'll just wait and see because really we don't have enough to go on yet to know if we really should be excited or not. Um, but um, I guess let's keep this next one pretty short because this is a speculation and then the one after that will be our main topic. But um, this next one is E3. It's coming up and a lot of people are super excited. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff shown off. Um, but the big news for Resident Evil, big speculation rumor, is that we may actually see the Resident Evil 2 remake at E3. And the reason for this is because um, Capcom has released their um, their sales plan for the fiscal year, I believe, between now and, I think, January in 2018 or a few months after. And it, it features Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, Resident Evil 7, and then there's um, a this mystery major title that nobody knows they're going to be showing it off. That's releasing. Um, I want to say in March, January, February, March, I think it's March. Yeah. Yeah. 2018. Um, and now there's a few reasons why people think this is going to be resident evil two. Uh, one, because they announced it almost two years ago and people think that we haven't seen anything until now. No pictures, no, no leaks, no screenshots, nothing. They're going to announce it here. Uh, and it's going to come out. And then uh, another big reason is because this lines up with the, um, is it the 20, 20th anniversary? Yeah. January 20th 21st. anniversary of Resident Evil 2. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's. I mean, it does line up. You, you mm -hmm. can't argue with that. It lines up perfectly. And it would be amazing. But real quick, do you guys think we're going to see the Resident Evil 2 remake at E3? Why do you think so? If you do think so, um, yeah, basically... Yeah, is it going to be there? Uh, I guess we'll start with Ali this go around. You went last last time, but uh, what do you think? Do you think we're going to see Resident Evil Two? Yeah, I think we'll see it. I th I think we'll see. Um, I'm hoping we'll see some kind of gameplay towards it, but at least maybe a trailer or a teaser, at least a teaser. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be nice. Um, so you think we're going to we're going to at least see that? Okay. Yeah. Um, or Operation Raccoon City Two. Oh, yes, I love that. That's so, oh, so good. Dear. The God. fans are going to love to hear that, too. <laughs> oh, God. Rebooting the Gaiden series. Um, yeah, all right. I taste in my mouth after that one. Oh, God. Uh, uh, AJ, do you think that we're going to see the Resident Evil 2 remake at E3? Oh, my gut instinct's telling me yes, but at the same point, I know Capcom and how they love to troll, so I'm expecting Umbrella Corpse 2. Oh, the other good one. <laughs> oh, I love where this is going. No, um, I think, I think, I'm, I'm sorry, I I'm think Resident Evil... in the middle. You're in the middle? Okay. Because we also have an upcoming Capcom game they haven't shown in a while called Deep Down. Yeah, there's uh, other titles this could be. That game. But... Yeah. In all reality, I think it's not going to be shown. It's probably going to be shown just a CGI trailer at E3, very short, and then they're going to show the actual gameplay at Tokyo Game Show. Right. Good point. Uh, Tony, what do you think? Yeah, pretty much uh, AJ had kind of taken what I uh, planned on saying, too. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I truly do believe that, uh, you know, after almost two years, they do have something by now. Gameplay-wise, they might not have anything, but as long as people see the reaction trailer like you know if there's a trailer for resident evil 2 remake it'll set people off and realize okay it is really still a thing they, they gave us a little bit of something you know because if you show off a little bit too much it, it, if the game is not that far along and you show off gameplay this early and the game doesn't look that great people are already gonna start getting negative and we live in a world where the information travels so fast and people don't really start thinking they gotta really analyze stuff so, you know, like AJ said, you know, I mean, yeah, they're ha if they wait for the Tokyo Game Show to show off, you know, uh, some gameplay, then I think they will do okay. And I, they'll do just fine by showing a small teaser trailer or a CGI trailer of the game because, you know, like I said, they, they, there's other games coming out uh, for, for this that they're working on. So, and I mean, the thing of it is also they can't not not show this uh, anything about yeah. this you know because right. right now 
this is their this is their big chance to make a huge comeback because Resident Evil 2 is probably the best one that they ever made out of the entire franchise. Now, my personal favorite is 3. That's my personal favorite. But if I, ha- if I have to I have to really look at things and how things were done and what 2 did for the franchise, I will say that, yeah, I can see why people say that the second one is the best. So this is like their crown uh, like achievement right here. I mean, yeah, they could have said, oh, yeah, we're remaking one again for whatever reason we're doing it. Because the graphics in that game are on par with graphics of today almost at times. Right. Yeah. So, you know, two is their money maker. It's what's going to get people into it again. Now, how they go about it, whether it's going to be over the shoulder or back to classic, that's oh, to be God. determined. That's a whole nother um, podcast. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, if they show the, if they show the trailer and they show people that they're working on it because we haven't seen anything, they're keeping a tight lid on it. That will be enough to tie people over till uh, the expo, which AJ had, had spoke about. Yeah, uh, I do agree with AJ also. I think that if they are going to show some stuff on the Resident Evil 2 remake, it'll be at Tokyo Game Show. Um, I would love for them to show something at E3, honestly. And a lot of people are saying, oh, I don't want a teaser. I want to actually see something. And in my opinion, I don't care if we get a teaser as long as it's something to let us know that they're still working on it and that it's still on its way. Now, as far as the two-year cycle, usually it would take a little longer, especially because they're not using almost any assets from the game except for the story and the layout they're completely remaking uh, almost the entire game it usually takes a little longer um so i don't know if two years is enough time it it might be um but really resident evil 2 was honest here though we all know they started development way before that's true it could have been started beforehand and i I would assume that if they're going to announce it it probably was well underway um, but Resident Evil 2 was a masterpiece in my eyes. It is my favorite Resident Evil game of all time. It is my favorite game of all time. So however long they need to make sure that they do this uh, up to the level of the Resident Evil 1 remaster is fine by me. I just want to see something so that it's you know confirmed that they're still working on it. This is still a focus and you know that we're going to eventually get some more. I have patience right. because it's you know it's been 20 years so. I have patience. I just, I just want to know that it's still happening. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page as JJ here. I, this is my favorite game in the series next to Code Veronica and Remake. So I want them to take as much time as they can. I don't care if they miss the 20th anniversary. You know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, what the hell is... I just want them to do it properly because at the end of the day this could make or break the series for a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of people if this comes out bad, they're going to jump. Yeah. I yes. think a lot of us are hanging on to Capcom just for this game. A lot. This is my if last this hope game doesn't, If this doesn't come out well, then you're going to lose a lot of the fan base yeah, for good. For sure. <laughs> I, I like how AJ says this is his last hope and earlier you said, wait, are you even a fan of Resident Evil? Like, he, <laughs> he makes a very valid point that this is, this is the last hope for a lot of people. I'm um, a blunt motherfucker. Yeah, you keep it I real. I do have it all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's very true. So let's hope we see something. Um, I'm sure tons of people that are going to be listening to this are hoping we're going to see something. Um, but if we do see something, you bet your ass we're going to be doing a podcast right after E3 talking about it. Oh, uh, yeah. And it'll be all over the pages. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it will be. Um, okay, but let's get into the big one, the one thing that is coming out, uh, Resident Evil Vendetta. The new animated Resident Evil film is releasing June 19th. Um, here in America, I don't have the na- dates offhand for other places, but um, that is the third movie in the animated series. Um, and it, I guess I'll read the synopsis real quick for anybody that doesn't know what uh, Resident before Evil. Before you do is. that, yes. Before you do, let's just clarify: the release date for America in June is the digital only release. The oh. Blu-ray and DVD comes out in July. Good yeah, point. The, good the point. Release date is June nineteenth for the USA. That's um, digital, and also what. What day was it they're doing a theater run? Is it the 17th? June 17th? June 19th, I, I believe. I so think 19th, it's the same day. 19th will be in the theater as well. And then One also day. on digital. Right. And then the hard copy in hand release will be in July. I will right. be leaving a link um, below that'll show you where what theaters it'll be in. And so you can find out if it's around you and you can go see it for the one night only yeah. premiere in theaters. Unfortunately, it is, it is limited release theaters. So. Yes. Uh, but then there will be a digital copy, and then in July we'll be getting the physical copy, um, and the physical copy will include the uh, PlayStation 4 VR experience, which basically puts you in the role of the infected. Um, you get to kind of look around and 
uh, up into the events of the hallway scene with Chris and Leanne. But the synopsis for Resident Evil Vendetta is Chris Redfield enlists the help of government agent Leanne S. Kennedy and Professor Re- Rebecca Chambers from Alexander Institute of biotechnology to stop a death merchant with a vengeance from spreading a deadly virus in new york and i believe that virus is known as the trigger virus uh, but yeah that is coming out soon so i want to know are you guys excited for this movie what are you excited about uh if you're not excited why are you not excited and uh basically get your thoughts on this so i guess we can start with um tony, uh, tony yeah tony what are what are you what are your thoughts on Resident Evil Vendetta? It looked good. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, like you know, I I uh, when I first heard that they were gonna do another CGI one, I was like, okay, because a lot of us, yeah, we do a lot of us do have problems with some things about the CGI movies, but towards the end of the day, when you really look at it, they are way more entertaining than the live action ones. Right, they're, and they're more done... more true to the content too. Yes, exactly. And I mean, it takes place in the same universe and stuff. Now. Granted, most of these things don't have any impact on the future of the games. It kind of tells its own thing with characters we're already uh, that are established and that we know. So you know, I'm I'm fairly excited for it because I'm just like, well, you know what? It always could be worse, but at the same time, Paul. you know, like they from what we've seen, it looks really good. There's they now have up the characters that we know because in the first one it was just Claire and Leon. That's all. That's all we had in the first one, and they were who we knew. Claire right. kind of took a back seat because of the the other actress that te- uh, the other uh, character that teamed up with uh, Leon in the movie. Then Leon was pretty much in the next one by himself with Ada crossing over between him. So that and which was fine because that's what she does. But this one, you've got three characters who know each other. They're three fan favorites, and especially one of them who's been MIA from the franchise for so long. And then, so I personally think that this movie is going to be great. I don't know. Um, you know, like I, I don't know if it's gonna beat the other ones, but I'm still happy that it's happening, and I really hope that if it does good enough, we get a fourth one, and they put Jill in it so they can stop forgetting about her. Because that's my <laughs> only complaint about these CGI movies is that Jill is like non-existent. Leon's been in all three because he became the poster boy for Resident Evil during Resident Evil 4's, uh, it, it, you know, hype for, uh, back on the Dreamcast. Uh, sorry, not Dreamcast, that uh, GameCube, and then the PS2 when it got ported. So he became the poster boy for Resident Evil, and a lot of people seem to have just forgotten about other characters. Which, like I said, I'm fine with him being in it. I'm fine with him being the, the you know in there. But at the same time, I'm just like, let's yeah. get some Jill back to the game here now because you're you're including Chris. So let's get them together in the next one. Very true. Um, AJ, are you excited for Resident Evil Vendetta? Uh, well, I'm gonna let Ollie take it first. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. I like you know, Tony was saying that. Um, th- well, this is Chris's first CG movie for us, um, and this is Rebecca. We haven't seen Rebecca in forever, so it's going to be a chance to see where has she been, what has she been up to, and some of that will be discussed with Aaron. I don't know how many you know details she can go into during our interview, but um, I think that's what I'm most excited for is to see Rebecca back up in the mix of it. And, you know, the the new enemy, uh, Glenn Arias, I think his name is, what's his relation, what's his whole revenge plot for? I mean, how does he tie into the whole mm-hmm. series? Uh, there's a lot of interesting questions. We've got, you know, some of our voice actors returning that we know. Um, it, it's going to be interesting. I like what they do with the CG movies more than, obviously, the real movies. The real movies don't exist. The CG movies do exist inside the Resident Evil universe, so this would be exciting. I think we're getting, we need to stop putting Leon and everything for a while, though. <laughs> and, and, uh, I think we can all agree about that. Yeah, Char- uh, characters need to come back. Uh, like Jill, you know, like you said, we haven't seen her in a while. Um, but just the fact that they're bringing Rebecca back is going to be awesome. Yeah, good points. Um, good points. Well, I guess I'm up now. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, Vendetta. I really haven't been paying too much attention to it, other than you know what we post on the 1.5 page. I've been kind of trying to stay away from them after everything that the other director has done with the live action films uh i'm excited about rebecca finally returning and kind of weirded out that she still looks exactly the same and is wearing the same exact clothes but (laughs) um yeah i thought that was kind of weird too she's wearing the same thing (laughs) i'm also a little weirded out that chris looks like roid chris 
meanwhile we have remake looking curse in Resident Evil 7 that that doesn't make no sense yeah um you know, like Ollie was saying with Leon, I think it's time for him to take a backseat. I don't even want him in the movie. I'm not excited about his yeah. part whatsoever. It's all John wicked out in this one, man. That scene of him in the hallway just knocking him out one after another was <laughs> Dude, nuts. yes. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, no, um, <laughs> where's my cop from Raccoon City? Where's my rookie police officer, man? Yeah. I'm half and half right now. I'm, you know, I'll, yeah, yeah download it. I'll download it eventually. I'm not really... You know, going in really hyped about it, but I do want to stress: do not illegally get this film. Go out and actually buy it if you want to watch it. Because if you freaking illegally download it, we're gonna get more of the same with the live action films. Yes. Yeah. We need to support the real products here. The the actual effort that's put into giving us things that we love. And so, go out and get a legit copy. Spend your money. If it goes in a movie theater, go watch it in a theater. So maybe we can get more of these CG movies and movie theaters in the future and yes. show that this is what we want to see. Exactly. I mean, it's only like, what, $4 on the freaking PlayStation Network if you want to rent a movie? Come on, right. guys. There's no excuse. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, the majority of fans will say that they really do enjoy these CG movies. And it's not like many other game franchises to, you know, to make live action films and CGI films. And it's like, we should support this if we enjoy this because we're lucky that we do, you know, like a lot of people say oh, the movies suck, but they forget we had these CGI movies in there. They're mm -hmm. actually, you know, really good and they do tie in with the story. So yes, please support this. Please actually, I mean, $4. What is that? That's a couple cheeseburgers off the dollar menu at McDonald's, you know, like yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, you know, the only the only other company I can think of that really pushes CG movies not a lot would be Square Enix with yeah, Final uh, Fantasy, Final, their Final Fantasy series. Yes, which they put a lot of work in their last one, um, the the King's Kingsblade, Blade. One, which was it was done really well. It shows that if people want to see it and if we actually get behind these things, they can be done at a high level. So we need to support this movie and and if we want to see our characters survive. We need to support them, too. That's yeah. what I don't get about the fan base, though. They complain about the live-action films not being for the fans, but then they also, when the CGI films come out, and they're actually a homage to the fans, they don't support it, but they'll go out and pay, like, $20 to see one of the live-action films in 3D. It makes exactly. no sense. People, stop complaining and vote with your freaking money already. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Get your priorities in order. But if you don't like it, then, you know, don't watch it. That's fine, exactly. too. Just, just um, we're not on. trying to force anybody to get anything that they don't want. Exactly. Just, if you're interested, at least give it a chance. Just yeah, help out. Uh, but I mean, I'm I actually am really excited for this movie because, you know, unlike the live action movies, this does tie in with the games. Um, I think the live action movies actually made me enjoy these movies more. And <laughs> like the difference between one and two, there was a big jump. Like quality went up, acting went up. Right. Um, you know. Right. Like, I really look forward to seeing these movies, and they do kind of tell you a side story of what's going on in between titles, and this actually takes place between 6 and 7, so six we're going to exactly. yeah, we're gonna find out what's going on with Leon. we're going to find out what's going I mean, on with yeah. Chris. Um, Maybe we'll see uh, the end of uh, Vendetta, you will see Chris go on the operating table, and they'll do the face-off scene from Face Off, and they take his face <laughs> off and put somebody else on. There you uh, go. Geez. Explanation for Chris Redfield's character. There you go. <laughs> um, as far as seeing Leon again... There was a point where I was just sick of seeing Leon. He was my favorite character, still is my favorite character, and yeah. they were overusing so him because of the success of 2 and 4. Um, but I've gotten to a point now where I understand like that's their money. Like This is where Capcom he is. He is the movie guy. He is. And um, I still like him. I, I do. I would love to see Jill. You know, There's other things I would love to see, um, but it doesn't really bother me that, that he's in here. One thing I'm super excited to see is is Chris and Leon together in a movie because we are robbed of their you know fighting sequence in six yeah. because it was built up to be this big standoff and really it was nothing. They disagreed for a second, pulled guns on each other, and then two seconds later they're like, oh, we're good. And so like I'm excited to see them work together in this movie, especially from that John right. Wick clip we got of Leon and Chris in the hallway just wrecking shop with these zombies that are coming up <laughs> like it, you know to a point of ridiculous over the top action, but. I don't know for the like I st it's it's ridiculous but you don't have super human people that yeah <laughs> you know you know what I mean you don't have Alice <laughs> yeah you don't have Alice so it's still cool um but I do have to say well actually I should say another thing I'm really excited about is to see Rebecca return and I really 
like what their where her character is she she is a professor you know at alexander institute like this makes sense for her character and that right. chris would go back and you know try to recruit her for this thing that's going on. like i like that that she actually mm-hmm. moved on because you know she was a badass but she was more in line with health and research and stuff and i like to see that's the direction she took um so i'm extremely excited to see her come back she does look a lot like the same i don't know why she's wearing that outfit i think that's cool i want to see it explained um but it looks like at a point in the movie she's at a she's getting married so something could happen at a that's wedding probably gonna be some weird twist on the on the main villain having oh, some kind God. of like Please yeah some fetish where he puts her in you know he puts her in her <laughs> that her could damn, be it's just gonna be something dress. weird it's gonna be something. I like weird. to think that she took her her um her uniform from Resident Evil like one and zero and yeah. just kind of hung it up in a closet and then and and there's gonna be it. a scene where she goes and she like pulls it out and blows the dust off like it's an old friend you know like a badass weapon yeah but it's oh, just her go. jacket yeah that, that, I, I can see that <laughs> and it For still sure. fits <laughs> just to, as an homage back to the classics but right. no. I am extremely excited to see her back. One thing I'm a little worried about, though, is the first John Wick sort of... That's what people are calling it, but it's the hallway mm-hmm. scene with Chris and Leon where, you know, um, they're killing a bunch of zombies, and that was fine. That, I thought they actually thought that looked really cool. It made me excited, and I cool. know these movies are kind of over-the-top right. <laughs> action, so I understood that. But the latest one they showed where um, Leon's being chased... On the freeway. Yeah, uh, that kind of worried me a little bit, just for the <laughs> fact that he shoots a dog, it takes out a car, and it's just completely... No fucks given. Yeah, the, the, it's just, it's so Michael Bay where the car, f- the yep. van flips and just touches the other car and explodes. And the way and he's it's like, like, the way he's like jumping around the motorcycle and stuff, I'm like, oh, yeah. please don't make this and too, it's too like, stupid. That van exploded just touching the car. And it's like, if you looked at that van wrong, it probably would explode. It's like, <laughs> they're making it very over the top action for action sake. They're having sake, a bad day. And we, they're not, ready to go off on anybody. Yeah. And I, I mean, <laughs> One, one big thing is, in the first Resident Evil CGI movie, one thing I didn't like about Leon is he didn't really have much of a character. He was kind of a machine. And then in the <laughs> second one, they gave him more of a character where he actually had, you know, he he had a character behind him, like his own thoughts and his own, you know, feelings and stuff like that. It gave more personality to him. And then in this movie, he's just like, just action star, people dying, not giving a, you know, a shit. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't seem like him. It seems like he would have tried to avoid that or he would have had some repercussions because of that but i'm overthinking it that was a clip i am still super excited for the movie like i said i just hope they don't throw in things like that like a lot of things like that where they're just killing people mindlessly for the sake of action for the movie but i yeah i hope we we don't see resident evil 6 on screen basically yeah yeah pretty much (laughs) Um, to be fair I think this is actually Capcom's way of pleasing everyone. They did say Revelations was for the classic fans, so mm-hmm. movies might actually be for the action fans, it while really, 7 yeah. <clears throat> onward is for you know, newer people. Yeah. Very true. I guess but, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I'm we, definitely excited for it. I will personally be finding a theater to go watch it in, even though I have to drive six hours to get to one. Dang. Oh, God, I'll never find it here. Yeah, surprisingly for me, there's actually one ten minutes away. I'm like, wait, really? Because like these usually these one night things or whenever they have like the the big anime movies or stuff like that, they never come to the theaters around here. And I'm kind of shocked that the one that I know is actually showing it. That's awesome. Yeah. You got so lucky because mine's two hours yeah. away. That's okay, JJ. We can watch it on PlayStation Network. Yeah, yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'll be purchasing that for sure. Um, and I, like I said, they're gonna have that VR experience. I don't have VR. I mean, at one point, I would like to get it, but that's free. Like, you know, I'm just gonna buy it anyway. Yeah. So I'm super excited they're packing that in. And um, right. I did say in a video that might never come out now because I just didn't put it out when I should have, and now it might be a little too late. Um, I like the fact that um, they're playing around with VR. I don't want VR to become the main focal point for resident evil i don't want resident evil to be designed around vr but i do like seeing side things where you can kind of take a look at things from a different perspective just as you know fun bonus things that have you know yeah, nothing to do with content. the actual game yeah because i would love to see the spencer mansion with a vr or the yeah, raccoon police exactly. station with VR. i still think vr is gonna go down the same route 3d did years ago yeah i don't see it ever that's being why i'm a big not thing. caving yeah no i i don't think you have to cave i think it's a cool thing but I, I don't see for the price and where it's at it's ever going to become well, 
big mainstream. I did try. Um, I played Fallout Four in VR at QuakeCon last year in Dallas, Ooh. and it was fucking amazing. Really? It uh, worked? Yeah. So okay. I, there's a lot of potential out there for VR. It's just we haven't seen it yet. Yeah. I think in the next few years it's going to blow up more, and you'll see these big titles coming out with VR, if not strictly VR, but at least VR capabilities that are going to definitely push the uh, push the industry for VR to grow technically to where mm. we have more, you know, more uh, better. Everything's going to be better. Yeah, for sure. So I'm super looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to Resident Evil Vendetta and um, the new reboot of the movies and everything. But, uh, yeah, I guess that really wraps it up for the Resident Evil news. Hey, guys. You guys have anything else? Yeah, that's That's everything. So now let's get into our interview with Aaron Cahill, the voice actor for Rebecca Chambers in Resident Evil Vendetta. Well, thank you again for taking uh, the time to talk with us. This is really awesome. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, question one. Uh, how long have you been acting now? Now, I've seen your – obviously, I've, I've been through your IMDb, and um, we know you know a little bit of your history as far as what you've done. You've been on a lot of different things. Uh, obviously, Power Rangers is the big one that everybody knows you from, but you've been on a lot of TV shows. Uh, one of my favorites, like Supernatural, House, uh, Comedy, like How I Met Your Mother. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, Horror. You did Boogeyman 3. Um, you've done voice acting before in Call of Duty, and uh, it says you've been through 90 different, 93 right now is how many credits you have under your name as actress. <laughs> you work hard. Uh, how did you get your start? Um, well, first of all, thank you. Um, I got, you know, I started acting when I was, oh goodness, I did my first play when I was like four or five because my mom is an English and a drama teacher. And she was teaching at the local high school, and they were doing um, a play called Cheaper by the Dozen, and then a same one, that, a, a, a one that same year called Carousel, and they, and they needed a kid for both. So my mom was like, "Well, I have one of those. Let's put her in." Right, and just I, throw her in there. And yeah, and I, thank goodness she did that because ever since I was like four or five, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I was like, "Oh, this is it," and um, so I feel extraordinarily lucky that I knew that early on, and that. Um, I've gotten to have, you know, such a career in it. And uh, I've been doing on camera. So I did theater. I grew up in Virginia. And um, and then I went to New York for college. And I did just a couple little tiny things. Um, and one of them was a short film, which randomly ended up getting nominated for an Oscar. Oh, wow. And I didn't find out until the year after. I was just like a supporting part. Nobody it invited you to the bummer, party? <laughs> right? Because I, I left New York. I had moved to L.A., and I didn't keep in touch with anybody. And it was, you know, I'm like, I'm not as young as I wish I was. So it was like back then, like Facebook wasn't even a thing. Right, right, right. So they didn't find me until after. And they were like, oh, but congratulations. I was like, no. <laughs> got nominated. Where did you live at in Virginia? What? Where did you uh, grow up and live at in Virginia? I grew up in Stafford, Virginia. Oh, ah, okay. I was stationed out in uh, Virginia Beach for a long time. So... <clears throat> Oh my goodness! First of yeah. all, thank you for your service. Well, thank you. Secondly, I was more NorCal. Uh, NorCal, listen to me. I'm such a <laughs> right. California girl. Yeah, California. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was more uh, uh, Northern Virginia than right, you know. Right. The, the beach was the oh, such a beautiful part. Love Virginia. Don't you just love it? Yeah, I miss it. I liked it a lot. I was out there for five years, and I miss it all the time. That the change of seasons. There's always something to do. You're close to like DC and New York. It's, it's just amazing up there. That is literally exactly how I feel about it. And who was that? Jeff, was that you? Or? Yep. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Ooh, do you see me getting your voice? <laughs> You're getting oh, it. You You're catching them. You're catching them. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that was pretty much my first question. And then we're going to, like I said, we're going to bounce around. Um, next one, Tony will take, and then JJ. And uh, again, if there's anything that you uh, want to just breeze through and say skip, just let us know, but we'll keep going from here. Okay, guys. All right. Uh, I guess the okay. The question that's fallen upon me is, uh, how did you come across this role? That's actually a really fun story, and you guys are my. I've talked about it a little, but you guys are my first Resident Evil official podcast. So I think awesome. this might be the oh, awesome. time I'm. T- it's right, and so I'm. <laughs> this is the first time I'm telling this story to our fan base. So I'm really excited. Great. Um, I got the initial audition because Jason Font, my wonderful, he's my brother. He is right. my brother, another mother. I love that man. <laughs> he, um, you know, we were both Power Rangers. Uh, he was the red to my pink. And right. <laughs> um, we've been brother and sister ever since. 
And I would like to say for the record, uh, we know we never dated. Everybody always asks that. We were always only ever <laughs> brother and sister. Um, and it's, it's so cute. He's just my family. It's like, you it's know. like that chemistry there. People start assuming things. It's like, no, we're just really tight like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've just always been that way. Always, always. Um, but so, so he had done the movements for Leon. Uh, and as you guys mentioned in Resident Evil 6. Right, which they, he was awesome. I mean, uh, again, shout out to him. He did a great job because uh, Leon is, a, is a very, another iconic character like Rebecca. So him stepping into the shoes of Leon and, and bringing the action and everything to it, he did amazing. Oh, that's, oh, I'm going to have to tell him you said that. I'm sure he'd be up for an interview if you guys ever wanted to. Oh, yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. We'd love to have him in here. So. Yeah, I'll, um, yeah, I'll have him, I'll have him, uh, I'll, he can he can uh, contact me or I can talk with you about that. We can try and um, get me and him linked up so we can work that <gasps> out. Sorry, I got a dog that's, that's freaking out. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Hi, pup. <laughs> um, oh, so okay. So how I got uh, you know introduced to Rebecca Chambers is because Jason Font, who did like like we just talked about, did the uh, movements for Leon. He had an audition for the movements again. I think yes, they knew they were going to hire uh, hire him, but they just kind of. Sometimes as actors, they do that. They kind of put us through our paces. Right. So he said, when he went, when he got the audition, he said, you know, I know they're looking for a girl. So why, I'm going to give you the casting director's info. Why don't you just send over your stuff? And I was filming a movie at the time called, um, oh my gosh, you guys, why am I spacing out? It's on <laughs> Netflix right now. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm going to have to go look for it too. It's, Is that the, uh, the one about the brother and the sister? The Watcher. Um no. Oh, the watcher. Okay, okay. I, I yeah, saw what you did about the brother and sister one that I was kind of curious about too. So, oh, oh my gosh, top secret information. I'm, I've never seen that one. I'm forgetting the name <laughs> of it. <laughs> but the watcher. Okay, so the watcher. <laughs> I mean, can you even like the watcher? So yes, if I could make a shameless plug, the watcher is out on Netflix. It's a thriller. It's so great. It's got me and Eddie Gathegi. Do you guys know who he is? Um, he was an X Men. He's on Blacklist Redemption right now. He's on um, the startup on Sony Crackle. Oh, very cool. Yeah, he's amazing. Anyway, he's one of my dear friends, too. So I was filming this movie with Eddie, and we wrapped, uh, like, three days before Christmas or four days before Christmas or something. And I had the audition. I, the only time I could go before Christmas was to go the day I wrapped on that movie to go to wow. the Resident Evil audition. So I went, and I got the email, like, during Christmas that I had a callback right um, oh, wow. on January 3rd or 4th, right after the, you know, the holiday. My, my birthday is January 4th. I remember it was like on my birthday or the day before, or maybe even the day after. And um, I went to the callback and I got it. I got the movements, which was super great because in the breakdown, they said they were looking for someone. I think they said they wanted someone no taller than like five, one or five, two. Right. Yeah. Rebecca is kind of a shorter character. So, <laughs> right. She's super petite, super adorable. <laughs> And I'm five seven, and you know, just not not what I what I, I think they had originally had in mind. But it just went really well. Right. And so I ended up getting the movements, and I didn't know that I wasn't auditioning for both because when I did Call of Duty, it was I got the the one audition was for both. For right, you both were you were the character. The you did the voice and the movements. <laughs> right. Exactly. So they were so trying I just, to split it up. Oh wow! Yeah, interesting, right? So mm -hmm. I just assumed. Oh, great. Oh, my gosh. I got this part, and it's so cool. And I started learning more about it, and I was like, oh, this is really cool. I'm really excited. And then I get I get to Tokyo to do the motion capture and find out that I, it, I have to audition for the voice part and that I might not even get it because a lot of times they don't hire the same actors to do the voice and the movements. This is huh. very true, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, that's yeah. interesting. So I was like, what you guys would have like the record screech like screech I was like, what? <laughs> right <laughs> and i was in tokyo so i was like what is happening i'm in another planet <laughs> so i just every day started saying like guys i can't wait to audition for rebecca it'd be such a shame if i didn't get to do the whole performance you know i right silly me how did i not know that you know and they <clears> had me audition when i came back and they they i got it that's awesome so, that, that really is awesome yeah, and it, actually, I did an audition. So we did it in January of 2017. So over a year ago, we did the motion capture. I didn't get to audition for The Voice until mm -hmm. um, August of 2017. So I oh, spent, last, you know, yeah, the better 26. part of eight months thinking that I might not get this part. Yeah, right. And then, yeah, that's a and long then time I, to go where you, you film part of it, and then the rest of it's like, okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, because they can do everything. It was really about animating the movements. That's right. where the most of the work comes in. And then you kind right. of have <clears throat> a few days in the booth and you record all the voice. But right. that's really, audience. yeah, to go with all this stuff, which is it's such a fascinating process. And I know you guys know all about it, but it was so cool because I found out. So I auditioned. I got the callback for the part like right around my birthday. And then I found out that I got the voice the day before my wedding. I was in France and oh. I got an email saying congratulations. <laughs> So I got to come oh, back yeah, and do exactly. that right when I got back. Oh, that's what? an early that's a, uh, wedding gift yeah. right there. <laughs> that's exactly what Both I said. Both of them are good presents. So. And I was like, her name's Mommy, M-A-M-I, Mommy. <laughs> right. So I love her name so much. So I emailed back. I was like, Mommy, oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, I guess that would lead us into our next question then. Um, now that you got the role, uh, before you started doing the motion cap and everything, were you familiar with the Resident Evil universe? Or was this something new that you had to, you know, kind of research and, and get to know? How much of it did you actually know beforehand? That is a great question. I, I knew I was a huge fan of the movie franchise. So I was really excited. And I obviously knew there were the video games because the video games are so popular. Right. I'm not a gamer. I'm, it's, you guys, I actually <laughs> just saw my Call of Duty for the first oh, you time. you finally saw and your Call of Duty. Wow. I'd seen, cl I'd seen clips of my character. And right. I'd seen, you know, pieces of it that people had recorded and put on the internet. But I'd never played the game. And when, when Xbox sent me, or not Xbox, <clears throat> sorry, but when, um, the Call of Duty people, they sent me this beautiful package like that they sent to all their main cast members, and it was like a special limited edition thing oh, with awesome. this medallion. It was so cool. Um, but they sent it for a PlayStation, and I was like, guys, I have an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and I, I like emailed everybody I had met Call of Duty, and I was like, thank you so much for the thought. Who could I talk to? Um, yeah, really, then, they should have like researched that beforehand and sent you the right copy. Maybe somebody right? was supposed to do that job somewhere. <laughs> I got so I got this thing I couldn't even use, so I ended up loaning it to my brother-in-law. I was like, enjoy. Let me know how it is. He was like, um, yeah, you're good. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I don't know if, if you guys haven't played. I'm not trying to plug another game, but if you haven't played it, if you if you play incorrectly, I die. Yeah, or, yeah. I'm not gonna get yeah. into that. <laughs> I may have made a few mistakes. Exactly. So like, all of my friends who played it have killed me. All of them. Oh no. Um, oh. So, <laughs> um, but yeah. So, so um, I had heard of the Resident Evil video games, but as I'm not a gamer, I had never played it myself. I right. only seen you know snip, snippets of it in the world. Um, I did not know that there was the first animated movie. So when I got the initial audition for the motion capture, which I thought was for the whole thing, right. I watched the first animated movie, which is a super hilarious thing to watch at Christmas time with your house all decorated in like Christmas <laughs> oh, yeah. right. lights. <laughs> Zombies everywhere and everything. <laughs> right. But I'm such a zombie fan. Oh my gosh, you guys, like I'm all about The Walking Dead. I'm all about Resident Evil. Oh, I'm awesome. like, oh. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. Like <laughs> such a fan. I have routinely been like, I will do... Like, I'll come off, like, the lead of a movie and be like, I will do an episode of The Walking Dead where I die pretty quick. Like, that's how much I love it. <laughs> that would be cool, yeah. Just yeah, anything. Like, oh, here, just put me in there. <laughs> I'll help you stand it. Yeah. It's really, funny right? that she, it's really funny that she says that because another voice actor, uh, DC Douglas, who does the main bad guy from Resident Evil, Wesker, he's he was trying to push for the longest time for get the people at AMC to make him, like, a zombie character or at least right. a character that gets killed off just like you said so it's it's right. pretty awesome it's like that like Easter egg to fans as well to be like yeah i know i mean like aaron's rebecca and aaron showed up in a episode of the walking dead as a zombie that would be so awesome even if they like put you in somewhat resembling your character is what they were and you know it'd be just it would be cool i mean it would be amazing right i probably wouldn't do just a zombie if i'm gonna be perfectly oh, honest yeah, about yeah. it well, yeah, yeah you want you know, like, an actual working role in it have those characters that you're like where did they come from and they're only in an episode or two and then they die right. some amazing right. way I mean, ideally, awesome. I'd like to just be on the show. Um, <laughs> right? Oh, my God. And then don't even get me started when they... Oh, wait. Okay. But I don't want to spoil it for fans in case... But you guys... Anyway. We'll oh, talk. Okay. We'll talk. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> so, but, so I watched I watched the Resident Evil first animated movie and just fell in love with it. And, um, and fell in love with this whole animated aspect of it, which I didn't really know about until after I did it and now and I've learned even more since being able to make the announcement and then and then having to have you know having to get getting to have interactions right. with fans um and see fans postings and then going back on like some some of the pages and looking at the characters and I saw for the first time 
um, Rebecca as a girl that someone had posted, you know, right after I made the, they, they announced me. Yeah. I was so excited. Yeah. She's a, a sweetheart to the whole Resident Evil universe. Like you, you're coming from, you have the fandom of, of Power Rangers and the backing from playing Jen and being the Pink Ranger. Um, but you're you're coming into this universe of the Resident Evil, which has a huge fan base as well. And Rebecca is like the darling of the universe, basically. Yeah. So and we haven't seen her for a long time. So we're very oh. eager. And so many people were really excited to hear that you were lending, you know, your voice and talent to the character. Um, I was just going through the questions and so many people were happy about that. Yeah, yeah there's definitely a lot, of, a lot of fans of them picking you to play the part as well. So. Oh my gosh, thank you for that. I'm it's it's so like humbling and exciting when fans get excited like I do cuz I'm I'm stoked about it. Right. It's so funny like I'm wondering if I'm making myself too available to the people at Sony cuz they're like <laughs> would you be available for pro-? I'm like yes. Yes. And let's I'm do it. I'm on a show right now and I'm still like, yep, I'll make it work. Oh, I th- I think uh, a lot of the voice actors and and um, mocap actors for all the Resident Evil universe and all the games and the movies can probably attest to the fact that once you're in you're going to get called back for more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. I love that because it's, it's different in call of duty. If they have a character, I'm not, you know, it's, right. Like, right. It's They're usually one off one, um, one, one game and done type thing for them. Yeah, exactly. So I'm so excited. I, I would just love to be part of this family for, you know, as long as Rebecca right. manages to stay alive, which hopefully is like forever. <laughs> so after you got the, um, you know, uh, you got the word and you got the part and you hadn't really had too much, um, knowledge as far as the game and the, and the CG movies go after, did you do any research into that to becoming the character? Like, how did you prepare to take on Rebecca? You know, I just really treated it like a, like any other acting role. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really trust, um, I really trust my directors. Right. Okay. So, and the writers who create the character for you and the directors yeah. who tell you how to be the character or at least give you the pointers on it. <laughs> Yeah, and they're so exactly, and they're so they know so much more about the world than I do, and or did. I'm I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, so yeah, I really just let them them direct me and go for it. And um, it's such a different medium. It was so it's so interesting. There's like still always a learning curve, right? In every different medium of this business, and the voiceover was even because my voice is obviously is very similar to Rebecca's, but right. Rebecca is. You know, they had me just use a higher register, and um, it, she's just a little different. Like, she's really sweet, but also like strong in some moments. And right. so it, it was, it was really a cool challenge to alter my voice to be Rebecca too. That was a question from one of our audience members, uh, Christopher Prettyman. Another uh, question from Gail Perry. She asked, um, coming into this character as part of the preparation as well, um, did you have to do any research as far as like the because she's she's. Um, she has a she's a professor. She's very smart. She got a background in her medical training and everything from from uh, universities. Did you look into any, any of that as well? To, like prepare to take on her medical side and all of her knowledge. What a great question! I looked up every term that she mentioned mm-hmm. in you know that that I mentioned in the script, um, and I went back and referenced you know um, previous things. It was so good. The the movie really the first one kind of gave me. The, the first animated movie gave me a lot of what I needed to know. Right. Um, and then this, the entire script that they had given us for this new one really filled in a lot of the blanks. So I didn't do any preparation that was, that wasn't kind of laid out in front of me. Right. You weren't uh, out there pulling out medical books and studying <laughs> to become a doctor, but you were learning at least what you were talking about on the script. Exactly. <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> that is, Exactly what I did. Yeah, I, I made sure to know every technical term and right. <laughs> um, feel comfortable with like multisyllabic words that I would never normally use. Um, so I did. Uh, yeah, I, so I prepared in that way. But I, okay. I certainly couldn't um, save a life. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. I'd still trust you at least if something were to happen to me. I'd still trust you because you're Rebecca. So, <laughs> <laughs> Aww, if not, I, I at least trust you in a fight because you're Jen. So you could probably kick somebody's butt as well. I mean. I hope I never have to find out. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> let's never test that theory. <laughs> I like, let's just leave everybody assuming. Right. Let's assume I'm dangerous. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess, uh, yeah, so my question uh, that's up right now would be, uh, well, you, you recorded the motion capture, as, as you said. Uh, you know, did you do mocap before? I think you said you did it for Call of Duty. And what was, what's like the experience? Because like, I know motion capture is kind of like a whole different world for a lot of people. 
Um, yeah, it was. Um, the Call of Duty was my first mocap experience, mm -hmm. and it was even different than this one. They're they're all they're. It's so interesting because they're all kind of different. I gotta imagine yeah. it's a lot of pretend because you're you're on sound stages with nothing but green around you, pretty much, right? Everything's fake, and not even like if you have to get a helicopter, it's not even a helicopter. It's like boxes where you're supposed to pretend it's a helicopter. Uh, yeah, right. It's like exactly that's we were literally on. I don't know if you guys have seen any of the behind the scenes photos. It's it's like us on like a wooden bench. Yeah, I've you seen know. a little bit of it. That's what um I mean when you first posted, you got the part, and I was like all over. It. I was like I gotta go after Aaron. I gotta oh, get her on yeah. here. So. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. Like I said, you know, I love this Resident Evil universe. I'm like, please, like, tell the fans to follow me on social media. I love them. So, yeah, th so the first time I, when I did Call of Duty, that was so wild to me because as a um, film and television actor, you know, you get anywhere between one to three cameras normally. Uh, you get, you do multiple takes, you do close-ups, you do, you know, mm -hmm. it's like a whole thing. And in this one, it's so precise with both, actually, it was very similar in both things, in that you rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. You get it down to a very fine science, and then you do, you record one or two takes, and that's it. Because they have so, you know, whatever it is, 150, however many cameras that right, the right. studio has, <laughs> getting every inch of your body. So they don't have to do coverage because they got it. So right. it's like this wildly exhilarating also kind of like wait what oh that's done oh you like like that oh, fast that intense <laughs> yeah it's just crazy i mean we did the whole movie in tokyo in what like two weeks oh wow it, that's yeah quick. i didn't know it was that fast that's amazing it, yeah it was really fast i think we were there about three but that's including like getting there early and right. doing the fitting and like what and then <clears> staying you know day after and all that stuff so um yeah, it was really, it was really, really wild. It's still kind of wild when I think about it because I'm so comfortable in my medium. Like I can be on a film set, TV set. I'll, I just, so it was like fish and water. I love it. I'm so right. comfortable. But that one still, I was a little like, oh, I have to go here on this exact line. I have to put the gun down on this exact line. It mm -hmm. feels a little more, um, um, not robotic, but you know what I mean? Like a little like, more like staged. Rigid. Yeah. 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 But and then you and then so so it's a really cool challenge and I really loved it and I gotta say to all the Resident Evil fans out there oh can we just talk about Taka Takasan as I call him the director right <laughs> I, I love that man I could not have asked for a better director um, the whole team um, Tony over at Sony I don't know if you guys know who he is he um, he he is one of the main producers of, of Resident Evil Vendetta. Oh wow! Yeah, and he's just fabulous. And he was over in Tokyo with us. And then mommy, who cast it, it's the <clears> whole <throat> team was just so loving and so much fun. And the stunt guys over there, I mean, wow, are they on top of it? And wow, are they professional? That's really and, great to hear that the whole um, business part of it um, is is very welcoming and, and involved in everything and, and inviting. Yeah, very. It was it was such a beautiful, fun, joyful time in my life. I'm so grateful. Like I'm I'm that's why I'm like I will go back and work with these guys anytime. I had such right. a blast. I can I have to tell you guys a little fun story. So okay. talk director. He mm -hmm. does does not speak much English and I speak no Japanese. <laughs> Although I will say I will say I learned well, you know, I, I like Oregato Gozaimas I knew from Power Rangers because a lot right. of our some were Japanese. So I knew that. Like Ohio goes, I must like saying hi. But I learned, um, sama deshita, which is what you say at the end of the day to say, like, great day, everybody, great work. <laughs> right. Job well done. Well, I know. Thanks, guys. I feel really proud of that one thing. Like, <laughs> Good job. One thing. It sounded great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but, but Taka, we would have this, we just are very similar personalities. We just are really goofy and like love life and I don't know if you guys saw the picture I posted where we're both making like the most ridiculous faces. <laughs> right. um, it's because we're the same. So he, I would finish and if it was a take that he was kind of happy with, he would go, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, Takasan wants one more, you know? <laughs> um, or if it was one that he loved, he would go, I don't know how this happened, you guys, but like imagine putting both your hands above your head, almost like a triangle shape. Mm -hmm. And and he would go, <laughs> mountain. I don't. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> like throw his arms okay. over his head and go mountain. And so huh. I didn't know what it meant, but it just made us both like laugh, all over laughing. <laughs> right. And so I would start to do it to him when I knew it was a good take. I would turn to him and then I started bending my knees so that he started bending his knees. So it eventually like by day two or three, I, like multiple times a day, we were going mountain. That's I great. Don't, <laughs> don't that is awesome. like know how. So yeah, it's a uh, it, motion capture. Was, it's it's so much fun. It's a I challenge. Think, uh, prepared for future conventions to start here mountain from across the hall. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it's not confirmed, but so hopefully Sony's not mad at me for this. But. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, it looks like I'll be going to the San Diego Comic Con with the two guys. Oh, awesome! Wow. And cool. Yeah, and I've never been. I've been invited, but I've been waiting for the right project because I, I I love Rangers, but I wanted to go for something new because I do other conventions to meet my fans as, as right, right. You know, the Jen. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm so excited to go to this one and and be on the panel like and the biggest, the biggest for Comic Cons. That's you know, you you basically won the prize for that one so you you literally hit the jackpot like yeah. that place is so sold out and it takes like literally it takes mm -hmm. over all of downtown san diego because my sister lives uh out there and it's yeah. in, like you can't get tickets to it but you can still go down and like see all the cosplayers all the vendors outside right. everybody having an amazing time so you'll definitely have a blast there that's awesome that is very oh, cool yay but i guess um, it oh i'm sorry what yeah, were you gonna say hoping oh no i just said so here's to hoping that you know, they meant it when they said it. Right, I'm always, right. I'm always so suspect until I'm actually like on there. a set. Even yeah. it's still like, even when you're there, like, okay, <laughs> is are we still going through with this? <laughs> yeah, totally. So, so that's why I said it's it's unofficial, but they they did they did say I was going to go. So I'm like, I'm with, I'm just like you guys. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> right. Nice. That's awesome. I guess, um, how was your experience then working with some Resident Evil veterans like uh, Matt Mercer, you know, the voice of Leon, oh, yeah. uh, Kevin Dorman, like some of the people that have been with the series for a while working on different voices or motion cap? Yeah, even uh, Jason working with Jason again because yeah. you guys did the mocap together. As far as like the voice, I don't know, were you guys ever recording at the same time? Uh, playing off of each other or is the voice work by yourself? And then like, you know, working with Jason and as well as some of the other veterans for mocap that have done it before. That is, you know, it's so funny. So I didn't work with Matt or Kevin or even meet them until we did a screening of the completed project at Sony in one of their oh, wow. screening rooms about maybe two months ago. And they had um, Matt and Kevin and I get there early, the three of us, and do um, a little on-camera shout-out. Um, and then we, you know, a little, uh, we did like an EPK package announcing the um, AMC movie theater release in, you know, uh, June 19th and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't meet them before that. That's going to be really weird, excited. too. You spent all this time acting with their, you know, their person, their body. <laughs> yeah. uh, this right. is the person that represents that person to you to come back later and meet the voice that who's completely different. <laughs> That's going to be a weird shock. It was so funny because I was used to hearing it. However, I was hearing it on set. Right. You know, which is the the motion capture actors saying the lines and then they then you know we go in and we dub over that luckily i was dubbing over myself right you um, just doubled the gun so yeah i just basically did what i did but like higher pitch um so they so they they but the guys were really nice and it was really cool to meet them and see what they did vocally versus what the guys had done on set you know what i had had in my head for Right. Oh my gosh, you know, right. a year. The difference in training um, actors between doing physical and voice. Um, I'm sure Matt and Kevin bring a different flavor to their characters mm -hmm. that we know when we combine the two, this is they the the physical and the voice make one person for us, but we don't see the split really. So Yeah. Yeah, and it and it is. It was different. It was really different and cool seeing their interpretation. Um and you know they're so fantastic and such big parts of this world. And Matt, especially, I think has been doing it for so long. And I mean, both of them are so great. They're right, both right. very much part of it. But, um, but yeah, it was really cool meeting them. And because yeah, we like I said in the booth, we had never um, worked together. And actually, the motion capture was the one I got to meet everybody and work with everybody on. Mm -hmm. Because when I did the voiceover, so I had just come back from my honeymoon, and I went into the booth like the following Monday. And then I got offered a movie, a Hallmark movie, 
so I had to leave that Friday. So my voice was my voiceover work was supposed to be spread out over a couple of weeks. Right. I was supposed to go in every couple of days, but because I had to leave to go film in Vancouver, they put they put my entire performance Monday to Thursday. So Just I knocked it out real quick. Yeah, <laughs> I did all of Rebecca for the movie in four days. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, which was like super intense and amazing and fun and long days and so yeah. Basically, um, your whole. Um, experience with Resident Evil, this this big movie that's coming out for us is contained within like literally three to four weeks. <laughs> that's incredible. Isn't that... The, the real work is the brilliant animators, if I right. can give them the shout out. I mean, definitely they're animating sure. our performance, so I'm super grateful to be giving the performance, but mm-hmm. my gosh, you guys, it is mind-blowing to think I was sitting like on a milk crate with, <laughs> right? you know, with dots all over me and no props. And and then to see it that come becoming out. like a bench in a park somewhere or something. <laughs> yeah, or or um, I think it was like the edge of a helicopter and oh wow, you know, <laughs> just the stuff they they do. Yeah, it's so right. cool. Or they're like, okay, you know, th- this they'll draw a little line on the ground and they'll go. So that's where the building ends. And, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. in your head, you're like, okay, but just, <laughs> I don't know how they made it look like they did. I'm right. so blown away. I mean that that. I mean, obviously, the animes, I, I know how animation works. I have friends who've done it and everything, and I see just, like, the level of detail. It's amazing that it goes in. But it also, like, not just them, but you as actors actually being able, like, you're told what to do. Sure, like, you could visualize it and everything, and it just seems, like, natural. Because I've seen guys like Nolan North and Troy Baker on set do their stuff for, like, Uncharted. And it's, like, all these running, gunning, explosion-type things. And I'm just, like, I would find that hard because I'm, like, there's no actual explosion. I have to visualize it. And right. so I think... That being able to just yeah. take yourself into it, even though it's not there, that's proof of good acting right there. Right, gotta have a, a to great imagination. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Aw, thanks, guys. Of course. It's, I gotta say, they, they imagined it better than I did. They made it look <laughs> better than I imagined it in my head. <laughs> so uh, the next question I have is, uh, this comes from Tavares Howard, and it's, it's a little bit of a mix between uh, a couple different questions, but he hit kind of the, he or she, I'm not sure, maybe he or she, <laughs> kind of hit yeah. the nail with this one. Um who is Rebecca to you and how do you relate to Rebecca Chambers? Oh, I love that question. Rebecca, you know, as a, an actor, as like a, you know, a human being out in the world, Mm -hmm. it's so cool to be playing this iconic character. Um, so that to me is like a, like a human, I'm like that Rebecca Chambers, that's cool. Um, and then as a, as a, as a woman portraying this, this other woman, she's such a great character. I loved being able to express her. She's so smart. She's so smart, but she's so tough and she's right. vulnerable in moments and she's, um, strong and, but yet really kind and, um, you know, and there there are many times when Rebecca could have died in this movie and she didn't because she is tougher than she looks and she just looks really sweet and lovely, which she is. Right. Um, but it was really beautiful to be able to play someone with so many different sides, you know, someone who's so cerebral on one hand, then such a badass on the other that she can, <laughs> you know, survive what she goes through. Right. And then that she's, you know, so gentle and adorable there's a couple <laughs> moments have, have any of you guys seen it no nope, no not yet yeah it's, it's only out in uh, japan right now yeah, it's, it's only out in japan that's what i thought because i know it doesn't come out here till later but i didn't know if you guys had you know no, like a copy or something which is terrible to say but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> actually we just um, had a whole conversation about that yesterday on our, our normal recording saying please whatever you do support the movie <laughs> yeah don't don't download it if you enjoy yeah. it just support it Support it yes. so we can more, and you know we can get you know like Aaron back for future yeah. uh, installments, and everybody gets to be happy, and we make money out of this in the long run for the the studios. So yeah. Oh, guys, thank you. I totally echo that. Please, you know it's worth the wait. Wait for it. You will love it. Um, but thank you, gosh, guys, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, it's I'm excited for you to see because she does not disappoint, and it's awesome. It's definitely, you know, the guys are still amazing and and great. There's some nods to their past, which I think every the fans are really going to love. Right. Uh, yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, and then there's there's just some great some great stuff that I get to do with her. Um, 
and you know, it, oh, I want to talk about it. So I, I want to hear about it so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I really do. I honestly, I can honestly say right now that everything you just described to us, it sounds like the like the directors have not changed the character so much in the 20 years that she's been around because everything you just said, it's pretty much how she was in Resident Evil 1 and then Resident Evil 0, which was the prequel. Like, it was technically her first mission that led up to the first game. So her she first standalone game where she was the main character. So Exactly. Yeah. You said, like, I mean, because in that game, there was times where she could have died and Billy rescued her. She held her own against tough opponents. So that's pretty yeah. interesting because we've all seen these characters throughout the last 20 years change dramatically like chris and leon they've definitely dramatically changed but it's great to see that you know they've probably changed a little bit of her like you know aged her up a little but at the same time she still retains who she's always been yeah and i think yeah i think that's exactly. something really interesting mm -hmm. yeah well said darlin thank you <laughs> i mean we know she's a professor uh, now as far as what we, we understand is she's teaching so she's definitely continuing with the education route uh, has she done anything else since then that you're that you know of as far as what they explained to you, like, like anything in the 20 years since we've seen her? She has, she is a professor. Mm -hmm. um, she's also more of a scientist. Ah. Okay. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that because you guys will okay. see. Okay. Well, she probably yes, went we more will. down the, after the, after experience everything, she's like, okay, I'm going to shift towards the biological side of things and <laughs> start I, studying some of these exactly. viruses maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Interesting. Right. And I guess uh, my question is the next one. Uh, it's actually kind of what we just already talked about and everything. Yeah. So I can, uh, uh, guys, I'll just skip down to. Oh wait, oh. Uh, you know, oh, okay. Actually, this is this is a this is a good one. Uh, uh, what do you hope the fans are going to take away from this film in general, being the third installment for the CGI uh, franchise? Um, what I think they're going to take away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like like what, like when they when they finally see the movie, what do you think they're gonna? feel or what do you think do you think like this will be a well-represented uh kind of deal yeah. oh gosh i mean that I is a kind of hard one to, yeah that is tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know what people are gonna feel but i i suspect and i hope that people are gonna love it and feel excited and i think it really um like I said, pays tribute to the story and the characters and where they've come from mm -hmm. and the world in which they've had to live and what they've had to face. And, and it's also really scary, which I love. I love scary movies. Awesome. Um, so I'm, I hope that everyone's as excited about it as I was. I genuinely at the end of the screening at Sony started clapping. There were times oh, in the nice. screening, you guys, I was, I mean, I was there like for all of it right. and I still jumped oh really I jumped. Like you acted the part and then you still jumped at it later I still that's great watching it. you knew what was going yeah. sort of oh yeah that, that's, that's awesome that, that answers it perfectly right there yeah, I mean exactly. like you said exactly. you, you, you've talked about it with uh, people before you you said that there's homages to the uh, from where these people have come from and that's kind of like what a lot of fans want from uh, this franchise is to see these characters of 20 years like, you know, like, you know, stuff from the past, we want to see it relevant to today. We want to see these characters change a little bit, but remain the same. And that's where the CGI movies have actually been well represented. Some people had a little bit of problem with the first movie, but they still loved it regardless. And the second one was an improvement over the first. So if it keeps going with the track that it's going, plus you've got three main characters who are heavily loved by the fans. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think she's right. I think that we're going to be in for one hell of a ride and a good treat. Yeah, for sure. I'm really I so excited. I really think you are. And our director um, really loves the franchise, too, and and made a movie that he would love, I think. And that's always, always, always what's important. Didn't we just and, say that last night, guys, about like how if a, if a fan does it, it, it comes out like as it should? Right. The, yeah. the passion behind it makes it so much better. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, everyone was super passionate about it, and I, th I really think it shows. So <laughs> I'm really excited, and I could be off base, and fans could be like, oh, boo, they missed out. I, I can't see that happening, but I'm so interested to to see if what I feel about it is on right. point. I, yeah, plus think, I think we're going to enjoy it. I think with the way you're talking about it, the fact that you're this passionate and this happy with the way it came out, uh, I think it's going to be um, you know reciprocated to the audience as well. For sure. Aw, thanks, guys. I hope so. So if, uh, because you've played this part, and I'm, we're all pretty sure it's going to come out very well, and, and Rebecca's going to be, we're glad to have her back. Um, if there was a possibility in the future 
of you getting a chance to play Rebecca again in another movie or even a game, would you be willing to do it? Is there any be maybe discussion about that in the future of seeing her again? This comes from um, us as well as uh, Adrian Diaz and um, another person called Biohazard Hero. So it's a, a multi question. <laughs> Without the shadow of a doubt, I would be honored, honored, honored to do Rebecca Chambers again. Awesome. Hopefully, Perfect. hopefully we do see her here in a future movie or even a game. I, you haven't. I mean, you've done the the, the mocap for um, for for Call of Duty, but to do an actual game, I wonder how like be the main character of the game. I wonder how different that would be. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I would definitely be open to doing the game. I would love mm. that. So I'm, I'm just, I'm excited. So excited to be part of this universe and I'm hoping that we all get lots of time with Rebecca together in the future. Definitely. <laughs> Great. And I think maybe our last question here, since you have to go off to your class would be, um, what is the one experience from making Resident Evil Vendetta that you will always remember? Oh my goodness. You know, th- I, can I say a couple? Yeah, go for it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. More the merrier. I think, <laughs> um, first and foremost, being part of this world and seeing the fans' responses and my own excitement about being part of this world is such a precious, unique gift uh, of an experience and not something that many people get to experience in a lifetime. Right. And so for that, I'm so grateful and I'm going to carry that in my heart always. And I think as far as fun memories go, like I said, the mountain story. Mountain! <laughs> <laughs> That's an awesome story. It is. Giggle every time. And, um, you know, I think I'll always remember the interesting challenge it was voicing Rebecca. Because um, they are so specific and rightfully so about even every little like, like an intake of breath, you know, had to be exactly right and exactly... It was so specific and, right. and cool and challenging and fun. And um, and then I would say, honestly, being in Tokyo with those guys, the the whole team over at Marza Studios um, in, in Japan was so kind and, and welcoming and warm. And they really laid out the, the, you know, all the stops for us. They took us when we first got there on this beautiful boat ride in Tokyo oh, cool. throughout the city and we had like this delicious every course you could imagine sushi dinner and um sake and beer and um you know one of the amazing crew members she's just such an angel she um a friend of hers does kabuki so they it's like on a day oh, off cool. we went and saw kabuki together and um you know they took us the the last night they found out that it's been one of my dreams to do karaoke in Tokyo uh, and so <laughs> that's they, awesome you're in the hole so they, of it, pretty yeah. much. So it's in a hole in another level out there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so they were so sweet because I, I don't know that they would have done that as our rap party if I hadn't. I, and I the thing is, I didn't press it. I just mentioned, like, oh, it'd be so cool to do karaoke before we leave. And, and the so fact they planned that they, this they caught that and remembered it and they planned yeah. it for you is awesome. <laughs> And we had our whole own private karaoke room with endless drinks and delicious food in Tokyo. So, and then they took us out for, made sure we had like traditional shabu shabu. They just really treated us um, so well and were so thoughtful. So I think I'll always carry that in my heart too. That's awesome. That's really, really awesome. That's incredible because I've always wanted to go to Japan and I have a severe fear of flying. So that's kind of prevented yeah. me from going <laughs> that far. The longest I've ever been on a plane is like seven hours to England. That's the, that's the best I can do. Yeah. <laughs> it is a commitment. Yeah, for sure. What was your, your favorite Japanese beer? Are you oh. a beer drinker or were you more towards the sake and, and alcohol side? I'm a, I'm a hard liquor girl myself. Uh, oh, okay. All right. okay. <laughs> So I nice. was I was um, indulging in the uh, yeah the uh, the other libations. I gotta say, guys, Japanese whiskey, yeah, delicious. It's very good. Did you try uh, Did you try the sake or any or habu sake? <laughs> Ooh, I didn't try habu sake, but I tried. I I'm one of those people. I'll try everything. Mm-hmm. I tried everything. Um, everything. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's delicious so, and dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's. I, I love food. I love drink. I love experiencing life. I kind of um, do, you know, I kind of take life, the, like, I eat the way I take life, like, just big swigs and <laughs> chunks and 
Yeah. Like there wasn't a time I just kind of chilled out of my hotel if we weren't filming. I was like, just, I'm just get the most to get out of here. <laughs> that's awesome. See, that's a good life motto. <laughs> yes, for sure. Aw, thanks, Live life big bites at a time. <laughs> yeah, right? Just because life is to be enjoyed. Like, I, I live in Southern California. We could fall into the ocean at any minute. True. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. It's very you know, true. I want to make, I want to, if I go, I want to have tried that whiskey. I tell you. Right, right. For sure. You make those memories. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, it sounds like it was a great time out there, and we're really looking forward to it. And again, welcome to the Resident Evil Universe. Welcome to the RE family. And, and thank, thank you, for, you for hanging out with us and talking with us. This is awesome. Awesome having you on here. Definitely. Oh, thank thank you. you so much. And um, if I if I may, I don't know um, if uh, if you when you guys are going to air this, but um, I have a movie coming out on um, Lifetime, actually, and then p- potentially we'll go to Netflix on okay. Father's Day that I'm the lead of called Hush Little Baby. So. That'll that'll be fun if um if you guys want to watch something yeah. fun on Father's Day. Perfect. Oh yeah, definitely looking for it. We look for. It. I'm gonna go check out the Watcher too. Now that you mentioned it, so good to know. Yeah, it looks good. Oh. It's like a good thriller. Is it a uh, horror slash thriller? Right. It's a thriller. It's a, it's a, it's a straight up thriller, and it's like a, I guess you could call it a horror slash thriller, and it's really fun. It's I I I really had a good time doing that one too. And that's and as a Res fan, you like if you think about the the day I wrapped. I went straight and auditioned for Resident Evil. So that's kind of a fun story, too. Right. So you already had that that thriller, scary uh, mentality going. So it's easy to transfer <laughs> right into another one. Exactly. Is there anything else coming up? Uh, any other projects coming out or any TV shows you're going to be on uh, in the future here that you want us to keep an eye out for? Yes. Actually, thank you for asking. I have – so I have um, The Watcher that just came out, and then I also have another movie that just – came out if you want to just if you just go put my name in a netflix some fun stuff comes up but then i have said um i have hush little baby coming out on father's day and then i'm also on a show on freeform called stitchers i'm in four out of the ten episodes (laughs) oh yeah you guys know stitchers i've seen part of it Uh, i haven't watched it but i've seen uh some readings on it and i've seen a couple trailers and it's (laughs) interesting (laughs) yes it's it's a it's a it's a it's a unique concept um and i'm i'm playing one of the main characters ex-wife uh, not at, you'll see that premieres June fifth. The movie's on Father's Day, and then later this year, I've got another movie coming out called Youth Group. That's a romantic comedy with Stephen Baldwin, Donald Faison, Joey Fatone from In Sync. Um, <laughs> it's just got a really fun, great cast, and I'm the female nice. lead, like the love interest in that one. So nice. that's a really cute, sweet rom com. Awesome. Oh, okay. And then of course you got our petition for future Walking Dead. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, and uh, Aaron, actually, one other question. Uh, how's the order coming along? Because uh, I showed the guy. They didn't know this. I, sh- I showed them that trailer last night, and it blew their minds. And We did not know this existed. Yeah. We do now. <laughs> I know. And isn't it? The trailer's amazing, right? Yeah, yeah, it really is. Like because, like, like, last year when I went to visit my sister in California, we went to a convention called LAX, and Karen Ashley was there. So we stopped by to talk to her because my sister loved her growing up. So she got to scratch yeah. that off of, like, you know, the list of people she's always wanted to meet. We were talking about it and everything, and uh, haven't, I know we haven't seen too much because, like, obviously there's still stuff going on, but that just looked amazing. It's like anything any action fan, any Power Rangers fan could ever ask for. Yeah, there's definitely a long list of Power Rangers in that movie. Um, it's it's all, it's like, I mean, it's a lot of us. It's such a little family. It's so cool. Filming the trailer for that was like, it was like a family reunion. <laughs> it really felt like a family right, reunion. Right. We were like talking about each other's families in the in the middle of it um i think it's in a holding pattern so i'll just say that okay um, okay but i really uh, am excited to see what happens with it because karen ashley just busted her butt to make it happen and i'm so proud of that girl and it's such a great idea and um she co-wrote it with a couple people and she's just super amazing so um you know hopefully you'll get to see we'll, we'll all get to see that sooner rather than later Right. Oh yeah, I mean, like if if like I said, I'm waiting for Res- this Resident Evil movie. I could definitely wait for the order because that trailer, I could just watch it a million times and just be like, I'll wait. I can wait. I'm patient. Yep, I, I can wait. <laughs> 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 oh, I love that. Oh, you guys are amazing. I'm, Ooh, I'm thank really you. grateful, thank you. <laughs> and I just want to, I yeah, really, you this wonderful energy, wonderful questions, and and um, so are you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Guys, I'm a big hugger, so if we ever meet in person, I will hug you. <laughs> Sounds um, good. I want to just take a quick second, and I want to shout out to 
First of all, um, I want to say hi to Maddie, because I understand you're a big fan and you couldn't be here today. So hi, Maddie. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Karen She. She runs my Facebook, my Twitter. Yes, you know, I'm, amazing. I'm, she's amazing. And I'm super, you know, interactive with it. And I and I do my own Insta, but she's I just have to give a shout out to her. She's one of my favorite people. We've become so close. Um, she shot, you know, photos at my wedding. She's just, she shot our engagement photos. She's shot my husband's band photos. So what you might not know is she's also a brilliant photographer. She's shot a number of friends' weddings. She's just a beautiful uh, Sounds soul. like I have another rival out there. Yeah, Tony's a photographer too. So that's an interesting uh, connection right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, or you guys could team up and make something yeah. amazing happen. <laughs> right. I'm all, I'm all for teaming up and everything. I've done it before at weddings and, uh, you know, the people have usually been really good about it, you know, uh, uh but. You know, I mean, and if your husband and you ever come out here to Boston and everything like that, need pictures by like Castle Island or down in Southie, anywhere, the North End and stuff, I'd be happy to work for you guys for free. Oh my gosh! Listen, if you ever see, because sometimes my brain gets like a, just I'm I miss things and I focus on just seeing my family. But if you ever see that I'm coming to the Boston area for an appearance, will you please reach out and let me know? <laughs> Oh, of course. Yeah. Like I said, uh, I, I follow you, a lot of the other uh, former Ranger alumni, a lot of other voice actors, because I, I go to the conventions, too, because I have I have friends that are like famous cosplayers. I have other people that like put my name out there. So I mainly go to the cons uh, these days just uh, to do pictures for everybody. I give a lot back to everybody because I, I always feel that, yeah, I, I don't charge as much as my competition, but I always uh, love giving more back to the people, like more prints or, you know, like more pictures, different ideas. I feel that we're Photography does kind of cost a lot, but I also believe you should, you know, be paying what you pay for. You get a lot back, and it's right, what's right. made my business work so well. Yes, I love it. Well done, sir. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thank you again to Karen. That was really she was the uh, the nail for this whole thing. She was awesome. She really helped uh, connect us and put us all together for this. So she does an amazing job. She Thanks. does. So big shout out to Karen. And I also want to give. Um, a big shout out just to all my fans, you know, resident, new Resident Evil fans, my so loyal and amazing Ranger fans, um, you know, fans from other things like my, you know, as Ted's sister and how I met your mother, those fans, or like you said, the Supernatural fans, any fans from any corner of the world. I just want to give my whole heart and say thank you. And, I, and I'm so grateful. You know, that leads me to uh, a quick one last question, or yeah. you know, if we if we make this go longer, it's up to you. Um, this is something that Tony had brought up earlier from uh, one of the admins from the 1.5 page. Who would ask that about um, if Rebecca and Jen, how would or how would Rebecca stack up as a Power Ranger? Well, that was actually Maddie who asked that. So that's, Maddie, that's oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, Maddie asked it. There you go. That's from Maddie herself. So. <laughs> oh, Maddie. Okay, so see, she's here with us. Um, wow, how would Rebecca do as a Ranger? You know, I think she'd be fantastic because she's got guts. She's got moxie and courage, and that's what all the rangers have. But she's also got smarts, and she's she's very similar to Jen in that way. Um, that her, it's not just her skills that get her out of situations; it's also her her brains. Right. So I think she'd make a badass ranger. Huh. I wonder what color she'd be though. She she I mean yes because she's a girl, but like pink or yellow. But she's more like a. She'd be like a turquoise or like a gray. <laughs> right. I know she wears a lot of the green. So yeah, awesome. like a green. Yeah. Like, green. <laughs> but all right, Aaron. Well, uh, we know you got your class. We don't want you to, to be late for that. So again, I can't thank you enough. I know Ali and uh, JJ have, are very excited that we had you on here. I mean, it's great when you can take time out of a busy schedule to come and help the little guys like us out. We greatly appreciate it. Definitely. No, I'm, I'm super honored guys. Thank you for having me. Thank you to my fans. Um, you know, just so much love to all you guys. And, and I'd, I'd love to talk to you. You know, maybe we can set up another interview for after the movie. Oh, for yeah, sure. Definitely. That's a good We're idea. Have that could open up so much more for you to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. you know, yeah. Once we can perfect. actually get into the details of the movie, then that's a whole other you know, hour, hour and a half, two hours, however long you want to put into it. We're here. For sure. <laughs> Ooh, yes, I love that. Thank you. And Aaron, and where, can, I, where can people follow you? Oh, gosh. I'll have it all linked down on, below, but if you want to shout it out. Oh, that's great. Yes, I'd love to. I am on all the social media. Please follow me on all of it because sometimes I'll post different things on different, you know, ones. Yeah. Um, on Facebook, I'm slash Aaron J. Cahill. It's a fan page. You'll know it's me because it's um, verified. Mm -hmm. On Instagram, I'm EJ Cahill. 
So E J C A, you know, C A H I L L, and that's also verified. And then on Twitter, it's Aaron J underscore Cahill, and that is also verified. So on all the social medias, I'm verified. You'll know it's me right away. Um, would would love for for you, you guys to please follow me. And I love Perfect. to hear from my fans. So I do read every comment on Instagram. I go on Facebook a, a lot and, and read as much as I can. And I'm going to start doing more Facebook live chats and um, more live stories on Insta. So those are actually a, a great way for a lot of actors and voice actors to have fans like see who they really are behind like the voice behind the screen. Right, right. You know, James Gunn has done it a lot for Guardians, so it worked out really well for him and a lot of other people I follow. I was just like, you know, it's just like you get to see the person in their actual atmosphere. So stuff right. like that, yeah, live Q and A's, that's great. Yes, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try and do more of that. I'm, get, I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you again, Kate. Uh, I'm going to give um, mm-hmm. Jason Font your email, you guys. Oh, yes. Of course. Yeah, that would be amazing. Thank yeah, you. we'd love to have him on here. That would be awesome to have him. Um, guys, thank you so much. And hopefully I'll talk to you really soon. Thank you so again, good. Aaron. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on here. And uh, thank you for being a good sport about the questions. <laughs> yes. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for asking great questions. Okay, guys, you take care. <laughs> thank yeah, you. Thanks, Aaron. Well, that concludes episode three. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to give a huge thank you to Aaron Cahill for coming on. And uh, it was a lot of fun chatting with her about the movie and about some other things. So thanks again to her. And a big thank you to you guys for listening. It's because you guys are interested listening, you know, to this podcast that we're able to get, you know, people like Aaron Cahill on the show. So thank you very much, guys. It's awesome. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. We all really appreciate that. And if you want to follow... AJ, Tony, Ali, or myself on any social media. I'll leave all the links in the description. I'll also leave all links to Aaron Cahill's social media down in the description. So thanks again, guys, and I'll talk to you soon.